Boom. Go wow. to this podcast. The Ocean Man. Wow. Look at this. YNW Snelly. Thank you for having What's me. What's going on, brother? Let's get a nice little handshake. How you living, dog? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm living good. Better that you guys are here and we're going to have a nice little conversation. No yeah, doubt. Man. It's going to be fun. Uh, I guess we'll jump right into it, man. Uh, you went skydiving today, right? No, not today. Last time I went was Sunday. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that, man. Because like I was just telling you before, dog, that's my biggest fear in the world. I want to know like what it takes in somebody to, I don't know, chase some shit like that. Because that seems like one of the most extreme things a human could put themselves through. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, it's crazy, man. Like, it's, uh, so, uh, how should I start? Well, I should start by back in, like, when I was a kid, I would have dreams, like, literally, like, at night yeah. of me flying, like, when I'm sleeping, like, flying, and, like, super lucid, realistic dreams, like, I could feel the wind on my face, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wow, like, that is a beautiful thing. I it even got to the point where I tried to, like, learn how to lucid dream just so I could oh, wow. fly around mm-hmm. my dreams. Okay. And so, I was just always super into it, and I, uh... I even asked my mom, I, pro- I made my mom promise me that when I turned 18, that we would both go skydiving together. And I, that's when I did my first jump when I was 18 with, mm. my, with my mother in Hazleton. Um, and I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Mm. Like, this is fucking sick. And uh, I just kept it. I, I was like, yo, I want to do this. But I was super young and broke. And I was like, I didn't have the time and money at the, when I was 18. Yeah. But uh, I was like, this is going to be something I'm going to do one day. Like, I, I oh, promise. Yeah. And uh, I actually didn't have the time or money to do it until COVID came. Mm. And I was stuck at home and I had the time and I had the money. Because, like, there was nothing. Remember when COVID was around and, like, you didn't have anything to do? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yo, I'm going to get into skydiving. I went back the one day uh, randomly to Hazleton. 30 minutes from here. And uh, I'm like, yo, I, I want to, like, I want to get into skydiving. And it's, Hazleton's a special place. Uh, it's ran by Don and Darlene Kellner. Actually, Don just passed away last year. Rest in peace, Don Kellner. Shout out R. to the Kellners. And he's a very special person because he was actually the world record holder for most skydives. Ooh. This dude jumped out of a plane 46,322 times. Whoa. What the making fuck? him the world record holder out of Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Wow. Whoa. For most skydives. That's insane. That's crazy. And he yeah. just passed away? He passed away last year from cancer. Yeah. Oh, damn. Rest Sadly. in peace. He rest in peace, Don Kellner. He, the guy insane. was a fucking... Wow. Lad. Yeah, so these are the guys that taught me. And it's a very old school drop zone up in Hazleton. Mm. But, um, yeah, so July actually... Uh, so two years ago, July of 2020, um, I was like, yo, I'm going to get my skydiving license. And then, like, right before Thanksgiving of uh, July 2020, I got it. And since then, I've made 300 skydives. I just celebrated my 300th jump on Sunday. Wow. And that means you could solo dive, right? Like, when you get your license, you can go by yourself? Right, That's right. That's pretty dope. You could actually solo dive around four or five jumps. But uh, you're going to have coaches with you, mm-hmm. like, training you, like, okay. right next to you the whole time. Uh, and you can't go, like, alone, alone until your 25th mm-hmm. jump and mm-hmm. your eight wow. lessons. And what was your first jump like? Like, how was that for you? Dude, my first jump, it was super special because it was my mom. It was oh, when yeah. I was 18. Sure. And, man, it's just, like, nothing could prepare you. Like, everything you think about skydiving, like, yeah. it'll be true. Like, yeah. like, right when that door opens, like, the adrenaline, you're like, wow. Like, I've never been in an airplane where a door just, like, swung open yes. like that. And you're like, we just get rushed with adrenaline. And that's that feeling that, like, like that feeling of adrenaline and that flight, the feeling of yeah. flight, of human flight is, like, us skydivers is such a community of people. Mm-hmm. It's a really close-knit community of people that actually do it. Because, like, yeah. a lot of people will go once. Yeah. They'll go for their first tandem, and that'll be it. And they'll be done. But, like, there's some people out there. I'm one of them. And it's just a community of this, like, the, this family of people yeah. that jump out of planes, that jump. And there's so many levels to it, man, because one, uh, you could start wingsuiting. You could, like, base jump. That's yeah. crazy, like, bro. That wingsuiting? Is, yeah, yeah, that's just wild. There's, like, damn near no safety there. Like, <laughs> oh, like you're really relying on straight Dude, training. I mean, crazy. I don't understand it enough to really know, like, how safe it is to do some shit like that, but that looks like the scariest thing you could do Yeah, in terms no of, like, doubt. jumping oh, out of anything. Yeah. It gets serious real quick. We actually... This has been a really rough week for skydivers, but more importantly, uh, base jumpers in the wingsuit community. Um, we lost three people mm-hmm. in the past five days from wow. base jumping, wingsuiting oh accidents. They just say... Uh, Bro, it's just so easy. One, you could be really, really good, and it just takes one error to yeah. fuck up. And you, like this guy Max, uh, legend, rest in peace, Max, uh, Maxim Slobodian. He's from Ukraine. He's got this guy. Like I met him in the Maldives. I got the chance to go there on a sponsored trip um, and skydive. I met this guy Maxim, and he had like the most like infectious like love for the sport of mm. skydiving. Like. Every we call them loads, like loads. You get on a load to go jump, 
like every load he'd try to get on it like he wanted to be yeah. like he he jumped like more than 8000 times like mm. this kid was a legend but he was only 31 years old and wow he he just lost his life on Saturday from jumping and oh shit man it's crazy man. yeah that is insane man i mean part of me has to believe though like in chasing what you love doing that yeah like there's no not i mean obviously he went too young but i couldn't see like in his mind going out any other way exactly like, at least bro. he went out doing what he loved doing you know what i mean 100 yeah. percent, man that's what, i mean that's what we're all kind of saying too yeah. but it was crazy because like the guy he was jumping with like these two guys were jumping together in switzerland mm. and like maxime passed on saturday yeah like you think that'd be like you know that you would stop and be like yo like my buddy just passed you know but mm two days after or maybe a day all the dates are mixed up there's a lot of like weird information going around right now because it just happened mm. but like this guy chris uh chris uh burns he also had the world record hold uh from a fastest wing suiting he died two, they were just jumping in switzerland and he died two days later it's just like whoa wow. like it's just like did that make you rethink this new hobby that you found so here's the thing though like skydiving is actually very safe mm. when we're talking about skydiving and Proximity flying is what they call it when you okay. jump off a mountain or a structure with a yeah. wingsuit mm. and mm. Uh, you proximity fly like through the ground and like that's the dangerous. F every f uh, I think I looked up the statistics when this just happened recently. Uh, one in every five hundred jumps that they do, someone dies. Oh my god! Oh shit! And then uh, for skydiving though, I forget what it was, but there was millions and millions and millions of skydives in twenty nineteen. Only fifteen people died. And the 15 people that die, like, it wasn't somebody that goes tandem, like, it's your first time. Yeah. It's people that get so good at this sport that they uh, push their limits, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And there's sense. a thing called swooping where you fly a really low canopy, uh, like, uh, like basically, my canopy that I fly right now is 150 square feet. Mm. But the smaller canopy you go, the faster you go. That okay. makes sense. And these guys, like, they swoop, so they'll, like... Do them flips, right? Do a 260 right? or something, a 270, and I haven't gotten into it yet. And then they come in super fast and just, oh. like, glide in with their canopy. But oh you can just God. hit the ground. It's so easy to mess up. But what I'm saying is skydiving is a lot safer. Uh, I'm jumping from 13,500 feet usually. I have two uh, parachutes when I jump. I have my yeah. main canopy and my reserve canopy. So if some shit happens, I have a, an extra chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you base jump, man, some of these people are jumping from, like, very low structures, like 500 feet and... They have one canopy. Uh, if they're jumping off a mountain, like, if that canopy doesn't open on heading, they're going to turn into the mountain, and that's usually where a lot of the deaths come from. Oh, damn. Yeah. Just colliding into a mountain. Exactly. So how does, so, like, uh, how does, like, skill work in this sport? Like, is it, like, a confidence thing where you're more confident trying different moves? Like, is there different moves as a skydiver? Like, how does that work? How, yeah. is, how does, the le like, the skill level work? I think it's definitely confidence, and it's definitely um, just time in the sport. And, you know, learning how your body moves in the sky. Mm. Uh, like I said, there's so many aspects to it. And it's crazy. Me and my buddy were just saying this weekend, like, no matter how many times you do it, it never gets old, man. Oh, like, it's yeah. just like, I could sit at a drop zone all day and jump. I've done, the most drops I've, I've jumps I've done in a day is 10 jumps in one day. Oh, my God. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. But, uh, man, it just never gets old. Like, there's always something. And I think you just kind of, like, over time, it depends on teachers, what teachers you have. Like, mm. You know, if you have somebody that's really knowledgeable about the sport and they're passing their information to you and willing to go up and jump with you and, like, teach you, then mm -hmm. that's that's obviously going to – and like you said, your, your confidence level. But you can't get too complacent in the sport because mm -hmm. that's when shit goes wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. when, like, you, you're con you're so confident to the point where, like, you like, fuck up really easily and you could lose a life or take yeah. someone else's yeah. like you could collide with somebody in the middle of the air. Oh, yeah, type shit. Like, that's crazy. Do those yeah. nerves ever go away, though? Like, when you're standing there at that door and that shit opens and, like, you feel the air and everything, you know is like, go time. Does yeah. that shit ever, like, get easier? You'd be surprised, man. Actually, it does. Like, uh, and that's where it gets a little bit... But it doesn't at the same time. Yeah. You know, you're always <laughs> going to get that feeling of adrenaline. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we all trace. Yeah. It's actually on this, I have the one tattoo on my I whole body. I was literally just looking at that. I was thinking and, about and that. And that is the chemical structure for adrenaline. That's wow. Dope. So That's, that's like, sick, yeah, that's man. One tattoo. But uh, yeah, but like, say you're on your like your your fifth or sixth jump of the day, mm. that at that point you're a lot more confident and you're like your nerves. Like, there's been times where I'm about to jump out of the door. I'm like, my heart's not beating that fast. Like for me, about to jump the skydive yeah. right now. Yeah. But it's just because I'm comfortable. I'm with people. I'm comfortable with. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. That's kind of so. Just like the skydive and take a toll on your body. Like I would imagine moving thousands of miles yeah. in the sky. Like must yeah. do something to you. Yeah. Landing, no, it does. Right? It depends, though. Like I said, it, it just it really depends. Like some, So there's these things called hard openings. Mm. So when you open a parachute, because you're going from 100. So terminal velocity is 120 miles per hour. Uh, so if you're going from that to, you know, you're pulling a parachute out, you're going from 
100 miles an hour to zero, mm. you know, if you don't pack your parachute the right way. Like, I've had, like, openings where I've had bruises up and down my, oh my, my, God. Like, my body, my groins. Your body gets used to it for sure over time. But if you have, they call them hard openings, you don't pack your parachute the right way. Or if you're, tr- you're supposed to, like, come to a, a, you know, like, you're flung flat on your belly, you don't want to be tracking and pull your parachute because you're moving so fast. That could really mess you up. But, uh, yeah, there's been times. And when that hard opening happened, I pulled. Something happened. I, I think I packed my parachute the wrong way. I had a low number of jumps at this point. I was just getting into it. And I look up. I, I My whole, every bone in my body cracked. Like, I, I screamed because it hurt so fucking bad. And I looked up. And three, like, four or three or four lines on, because you have a bunch of lines going up to your canopy, were yeah. broken. Oh my God. And they're just, like, fl- I'm like, oh, my God. Like, my canopy. And I'm checking it. And I'm like... Shit, am I gonna be able to land this thing? Like, and I did a control check, and I, I a control check is when you trust the brakes, you test if it could turn, yeah. and it checked out for me. I'm like, I guess I'll land it. When I landed, everyone's like, "You're crazy, dude! All it would have taken was one gust of wind, and it would have collapsed your canopy at a thousand feet. You wouldn't be able to pull your reserve." And oh would've damn, would've God. Fucking, is that something that like sparks you up though? Like afterwards, like is that type of adrenaline and that type of like, like going against something like that? Is that something that fires you up? That oh, type yeah, of that type sure. of risk? Yeah, I no, guess it definitely does. I mean. That's like I said, man, that adrenaline, that feeling of adrenaline, there's nothing like it. There's no drug, no out, nothing in the world that can match that mm. feeling of, 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 of flying. That's of interesting. Skydiving. I can only imagine, man. That shit sounds crazy. Like I said, like that, in terms of like my bucket list and all of my fears from like the bottom to the top, mm-hmm. that's probably it. Like once I do that, I think I'll be satisfied. Yeah. I'm fucking with life, man. I, I got to do it at some point, though. I got to I got to Man, let's set it up, man. Let's, let's I do go, it. I go, sure. most, I go most weekends if I'm not oh, doing man. something different. I go most weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> up in Hazleton, um, they have a really dope. They have see they have drop zones all over the country, yeah. and they have drop zones all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I was saying before how I met Maxime, the guy that passed in mm-hmm. Maldives. That mm-hmm. was a very intimate and special trip that I yeah. got the chance to go on. Uh, there was only seven Americans there, me being one of them. So there's people from Russia, Ukraine, Brazil, Croatia. Uh, uh, I could go on and on, you know, about this list of people that I met from all over the world, mm. Switzerland and uh, Dubai. Like, I met these crazy people, like foreign people that were, like, were skydivers yeah. from all over the world, and they were just so good. I mean, I've made such good friendships. Like, you know, some of them became family. Like, it was just such a crazy, intimate uh, trip, and yeah. we got to jump over the islands of the Maldives. It took me, like, 30 hours of travel there. Like, mm. I'm in the middle. You're it's uh, you, The Maldives is in the middle of the equator. So you're in the middle of the, uh, uh, you see that black pin right there? Yeah. Right below oh, India. Shit. Yeah. That's oh, wow. the Maldives. In so the you're middle, in Asia. In it's the in middle. Asia. Yeah, it's in Asia. It's a, it's a um, mm-hmm. Muslim country. And uh, you're in the middle of the ocean. Wow. And you see the equator line right underneath it? Yeah. That is the middle of the earth. That's you know? fucking insane. So Damn, dude. You're, you, and I can't describe the energy and the feeling of this place. Like, mm. Yeah. Like when you and the sunrises and like the mm. waters, like the bluest water I've ever seen, and like the vibe oh, of the, the energy of this place was just so special. Yeah, and, man. Uh, shit, yeah, that was a good trip, man. That's dope. Did you do anything like your brand related while you were down there? So uh, that was a sponsored um, um, trip. I was sponsored <laughs> by a company called To the Moon. They're a marijuana company based out of New York City. Okay. And I locked in a contract, and they paid for everything. Oh, that's sick. So I did. I spread my message about Save the Wave a little bit, especially because we were on, like, this island and yeah. stuff. But it was for To The Moon, so I was spreading To The Moon. Mm. And I was oh. repping their brand and, like, making TikToks for them. And because uh, that's the thing, like, I leveraged my, my, my following on social media because I – and skydiving, like – I know I bring something to the table for brands, you know mm. what I mean? Because, one, well, not everybody's skydiving and not everybody has, like, a, a following where they can, you know, maybe get views on TikTok yeah, or whatever. Right. So I leveraged that for brands to try to get uh, deals so I could go jump for free. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Are you working on your pilot license, too? Yeah, man. That's what – man, t- honestly, like, uh, skydiving and – so uh, – I did save, uh, you know, save the wave uh, uh, in 2019. I started save the wave, and mm-hmm. I went hard until 2020. And when COVID uh, came, that's what it kind of like, uh, you know, it really screwed me over, mm-hmm. and I had to come home. And we yeah. can get into that a lot, you no know. Doubt. I'm sure we'll talk about save the wave in a second here, but uh, you know, once I started skydiving, I got super into aviation in general because I'm in yeah. planes all the time, and it just really took over my life. I was like, wow, like I love skydiving, one. 
And so I became obsessed with it. And I, I, you know, I grinded super hard for like a year skydiving. Then I'm like, yo, I love flying. I want to, I want to learn how to fly planes. Like, you know, I'm just like letting this, like my, my, uh, just my intuition. And like, you know, I'm letting this life be like, take me where it wants. Because Mm -hmm. like, if I feel passionate about something, like I go towards it and I'm, I gravitate towards it. And I've just been super into, uh, all around flying parachutes. I'm, I'm getting my pilot's license right now. Yeah. That's, like, that's sick, I have like bro. 25 hours of flying right now. And have you flown? Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm actually, so the point I'm at right now is, um, I'm ready to solo, which is like, I could fly without my uh, teacher, mm-hmm. but I'm waiting for my medical certificate to get cleared from the FAA because, uh, I have a, a very small criminal record actually. And <laughs> it, just some stupid shit, man. Seriously, <laughs> wow. stupid shit. But, the FAA doesn't mess around. Like, they need to know everything. Yeah. And so uh, I, I I submitted all my stuff, my paperwork to them, but they take, like, sometimes months to get back. Mm. There's actually a pilot shortage right now. You'd think they try oh, to get yeah. people to, like, move along in the program, but they're just a pain in the ass, man. Is that something you'd want to do? Like, would you just want to fly, like, solo, do your own shit, or would you want to do... So I'm not really sure exactly where I want to go with it. I don't really know. The idea of being a commercial airline pilot for somebody like United or... Yeah. Uh, you know, that doesn't really, like, nah. I don't really want to be, like, that, like, a career airline pilot, but I'd love to be, like, a helicopter pilot that, that's like, sick. drops off skiers in the Alps or, mm, like... That's dope. Or, like, helicopters, what I've been going towards, or just even, like... So, dude, if I found, like, a billionaire and I was, like, his private jet, like, pilot, mm-hmm. you know, he could p- pay me, like, a quarter mil a year that's just to sick. be on call for him and, like, I could just, you know, fly him around, and that's only when he needs me. Mm-hmm. So my whole idea right now is, like, if I can get to that point... Then if if I could just do something where I'm on call being a pilot, then I could do Save the Wave. Then yeah. I could do all these other things. You know what I mean? Because Save the Wave is like my passion project yeah. where I, it's like my baby where I give it back to Mother Earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I never want to get rid of it. You know, I want I want to always have it, but I need to have a secure income. You Hell know yeah. What I mean? so Hell yeah, bro. That's kind of my, I don't know. Right now I'm just trying to learn how to fly. You know? That's a that's beautiful sick. philosophy though, man. And I, I identify with that a lot. Like just following your intuition and going exactly. where this life will take you. Yeah. Like, and, and following where you're like drawn to right. and what's attracted yeah. to, like it's what's attracting important. you. Exactly. I feel like when we're young, we're more in tune with that. But yeah. as we grow older and like authority figures start to plant voices in our heads mm-hmm. and tell us what we should be doing, yeah. go to college, get a job, mm-hmm. get married yeah. and live the traditional life. We lose touch with that. Yeah. So to be in tune with that intuitive side of yourself yeah. and to go and follow your own nature is, is a truly like, beautiful way it's to a live beautiful thing man and it gets hard too because all it takes is for you to get a new car and you have a car payment yeah bro and you have a girlfriend that you know wants to see you every <laughs> night and then you have these like these things these attachments it's like roots like you're rooting yeah, you're yourself root, exactly this, so i this. try to push them off as much as possible no so doubt. that i could be free yeah but um yeah you definitely man it is a beautiful thing you have to follow that that spark you know that that like that feeling of like mm. Like, what really interests you? You know, mm-hmm. when you're sitting in the shower and you're like, you know, you can't stop thinking about this thing, you know, or like you're waking up and what's the first thing you wake up, you think of when you wake up in the morning? What's the last thing you think of when you yeah, wake up? That's usually the most important thing. So. It could be anything. There's so it many different it changes, styles. Man. It changes. It does. Yeah. There's no rules to this shit. Yeah. Man. There's no rules to this life shit. Are you into like manifestation and attraction and stuff like that? I 100%. see you write a lot in your notebook, like goals and stuff like that. And it All seems day. like human beings have this weird power source that we oh, are in yeah, touch bro. with, but a lot of people don't understand i don't think we truly understand it we don't but it's it's a real thing i think it is it is and i think now with the power of like where the internet's at where you could spread like yeah you know your 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 messages so easily and you're, you hear something you're like yo that makes sense to me yeah like, you know that like mind like that does make a lot of sense to me that we could like you know these words that we that we speak are super powerful man no doubt oh, it's like you. um there's something like uh uh, uh like what like what you say you know, it's like spells every time you say something. Like yeah. it's like you're really putting that in the out in the universe. You know, you're, you're yeah, putting bro. that energy out there. So there's this uh, there's this one book that every entrepreneur should read. It's a it's a cool little book. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I'm uh-huh. sure you've heard of it. Yeah, for sure. And in one of the one of the chapters is called Auto Suggestion. And it's it's this oh. idea. He studied this guy, Napoleon Hill, studied millionaires, studied billionaires and yeah. the commonalities between them, right? And he noticed one thing that they all had in common was this thing called auto suggestion where they have a way of speaking to themselves and mm. kind of speaking in a way th- that they want something to happen. Like, you know, they'll, they'll affirm themselves. Like I am powerful. I'm capable of achieving X, Y, and Z. I'll make, you know, a quarter of a million dollars this mm-hmm. year by doing this. And they're very specific about the metric of their goals and so wow. on. And they just 
kind of plant this within their subconscious mind and yeah and see, it could work the opposite way, yeah. though, because if, Very you're like, much. if you're saying, I'm a piece of shit, like, yeah, I hate this nothing. job, like, I'm, I'm a nobody, yeah. like, I'm a, what do you think is going to happen then? Yeah, if man, you keep your, saying that you doubt yeah. all your things to yourself. It's crazy, man. We yeah, got to wake up. Yeah. No doubt. 100%. No man. doubt. If you program your mind, your body will follow. I forget who initially, like, coined that quote or whatever, but I definitely Ooh. believe that that's true. Yeah, like, 100%. You could tell yourself, even the smallest things, we talk about it on the podcast all the time, but even the littlest shit, like, you could change the littlest thing about your life. Every single day, mm-hmm. and at some point it'll lead, it'll blossom into something amazing. Your body man. will definitely follow your mind, and ju- yeah. I like I like how you said that too, because I I think a lot of people don't touch on that how self destructive the mind could be towards the body as right. well. Right, right, and I've said I've struggled with that, man. Like I've really struggled with that, <laughs> as everybody does. Yeah, but yeah. um, you know, it's it's talking about and having conversations like this where we're like, yo, this is like a thing. You know, this mm-hmm. is like a real thing that like everyone's dealing with and spreading the message, man. Yeah. Go follow your dreams. Go fucking skydive. Go skydive, Go man. Life's shit. way too short, man. And I'm going to be honest with you, everybody watching this that's curious about skydiving, like your first tandem jump is sa- is the safest thing you could do, honestly. I'm not going to say. Like you have more of a chance of dying on your way to go to skydiving in your car than you do skydiving. Yeah. That's nuts, though. One thing I wanted to ask you, too, I mean, I guess it's a simple one, but what do you think you, f- or what do you feel like you're called to more, like the sky or the ocean? So that's where it's like really fucking hard, dude. Wind because or wind or, or water, it's brother. hard, man. Because here's the thing, too. It's like, like the Avatar, it's crazy. And that's where I've had a lot of like self, uh, like, oh, like where am I? What am I doing? Like where am I at? Because it's two opposite things. Because I got yeah. here saving the ocean, you know what I mean, putting like my all into like protecting our Earth. Yeah. And then obviously flying isn't good for the ozone, like emitting all those like uh, you know uh, emissions yeah. and. Like, man, that's not good. So it's a very contradicting thing. But the way I look at it is, like, it's the yin and yang, man. You have to have balance in life. For and sure. it's, like, if like if I'm passionate about skydiving and flying, which I really am, and I'm passionate about, you know, saving our oceans, which I really am, like, it's okay to do the both. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Like, it's okay to do both. And that's actually so I'm making um, <coughs> Save the Wave. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of making it a 100% nonprofit mm-hmm. thing. So basically because, and man, I never made profit, honestly, yeah. with Save the Wave. I mean, like, I, all the money I made from it, I put back into the project mm-hmm. just to keep it alive and going. So, but I never really made money. I never made money on it, and I don't need to. I want it to be my, my way of giving yeah. back, like I said. Like, yeah. I, want, I want my clothes to be able to raise money for these, uh, these people, these nonprofits that put their everything into saving our oceans. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's so. so many different streams that you could take that anyways. Like, you could do the or use the bulk of what you do just towards doing better for the world. But it's also strengthening your social media accounts so much. And exactly. there's so much you could do with that as well in terms of, like, online marketing today. Yeah. Man, so much shit you could do. Yeah, so it's kind of hard. So, like, right now I'm definitely in, like, a, you know, flying, skydiving phase. But I'm trying to bring it back and do, like, a little bit of everything. You yeah. know, especially because we got this dope ass warehouse yeah. now, mm. Hell and yeah. I actually have space to like work and grow, and like have a place where I could like make clothes and stuff. Yeah. And it's really dope to have this warehouse now, and I'm I'm really gonna start get into uh, save the wave again and start making clothes and like selling them. And so that's interesting, man, because uh, I'm I kind of relate too. Like you have a lot of pots, and mm-hmm. it's sometimes when you have so many different pots or so many different passions, it's hard to water every one of them. It and is. so maybe one might not be growing. Mm-hmm with some of the other ones that you're passionate about. Yeah. And that's kind of a difficult thing, like, to compartmentalize within yourself as a creative person. Mm-hmm. So, like, how do you go through that? How, how What's the mindset like with it's that? It's hard, dude, because, um, like, I have the, like, Save the Wave, man. I started, and so I started this when I was 19 years old, and I, I just had this, like, you know, I've always been passionate about our earth and, you know, you know, just kind of being mindful about, like, this is our, our mother, you know? Yeah. Our earth yeah. is our mother. We have to give back to it. We have to, you know, nurture her, mm-hmm. make sure she's doing okay, or else we can't be here. Um, and I, I had this idea literally one day. I'm like, save the wave. Like, Hey, I just save the wave, save the wave. I'm like, I'm going to do this, man. I'm going to go like help save our oceans. Cause yeah. I see, I started seeing all this stuff on social media of like, you know, the state of our oceans, all this plastic bullshit, mm-hmm. you know? And I felt so called. Like, I felt like I literally had like, it was like a very spiritual moment I had with myself. And I was like, I need to do this. I had such a calling and I was like, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket yeah. and I'm doing this. I was like, I need to get a bus. I need to travel around mm-hmm. our coast and do this. And I, I did that shit when I was young, 19, 20 yeah. year old kid. I, it's 20, like, uh, right. Uh, and I started save the wave July 15th, 2020, uh, 2019. Uh, I was 19 then. And mm. I, I literally just this young kid. I'm like, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to sell all these clothes. I'm going to travel around the yeah. coast and try to save roses. There's so much clarity <laughs> in figuring out that what, like, 
what drives you too. Like you figuring that out at such a young age is so cool. Do you see yourself getting back into that whole traveling around like the coast back in the van pretty soon? So that's hard because right now the bus is in bad shit. Yeah, know, yeah. To be honest, completely honest with you, it's where is uh, it? Is it out here? It, it's at, it's at my parents' house. Oh, okay, we have like a bunch of acres like land. Yeah, and yeah. It's just sitting in a field right now, man. As sad as it is, like. It's just not doing good. It's mm-hmm. just like, and I've put so much time and my energy and money into that van to try yeah. to get it going. But it's like, I'm at a point now where I have to make some really big decisions because I could either dump thousands and thousands of more dollars into it. Mm. But I, it like, it's not meant for what I want it to be. You know yeah. what I mean? I bought that thing for $1,600 when I was 19 years old yeah. off the side of the road. Yeah. You know, it has 180,000 miles on it. Granted, it's a diesel. I think it, the engine could go farther, but mm-hmm. the whole, it's really not good right now. Yeah. So... Actually, I've been thinking about it, and I kind of want to sell that, sell my car, and get some money together to get a nice, like, sprinter van <laughs> yeah, that I could, like, idea. like a nice one with AC and, like, because, bro, I'd have no AC. I had no electrical outlets. I had yeah, no man. running water. Damn. It was just me and my sweaty friends in this van fucking on the beaches of yeah. America doing these beach cleanups, like, selling these clothes, just trying to make it. You know, and I'm a, and I'm a small kid. I'm a young kid from the 570 mm-hmm. from Northeast Pennsylvania mm-hmm. that is pushing his limits and just trying to, you know, spread good messages, yeah. spread good energy. And, you know, but man, I've raised 30, over 30 grand in one year. Yeah, man. That That's first sick, year man. for our four nonprofits fighting for our orphans. And wow. I did that shit. And I'm proud of that. Oh, yeah. You should. You know? And there's so much beauty in that because there's not a lot. I mean, at least from what I see going on around here today. There's not a lot of people trying to give back to the planet in that regard. They're just trying to suck as much out of it as they could before they yeah. leave. And that's always been a thing for me is to just have, you know, to give back to her, you know, and just try to make a good impression. And, you know, it all comes down to my mom, how my mom raised me too, because she's super environmental and mm-hmm. mindful and spiritual. Yeah. She's a beautiful woman. I love my mom. Shout out my mom. I love you, mom. Shout out Mama Snow. to watch this. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, man, Save the Wave is a, is, a, is a beautiful thing. I love it. It's my baby. Yeah, there's it's so much baby. clarity, man, in figuring that out, like I was saying. Like, yeah. figuring out, like, that brand, like, you get a name for it, you get attached to it, you get a feeling, like, that it drives you more and more every day. There's yeah. so much beauty in that. But there's, and I've learned so much from doing that journey that I would have never learned in college. I would have never learned yeah. unless oh, yeah. I went in, in the real world and, like, started a business and, like, started a brand and a nonprofit, you know, situation, you know? How about having to prove that to yourself, though? Like, imagine how that changes the mind. Like, yeah. whoa, what am I capable of, bro? Yeah. And like, you really go to do the trials and tribulations, though, because no there's doubt. nights where you're crying in oh, your hell. arms. Like, <laughs> oh, what am I doing, man? I'm screwing this up. Yeah. Like, especially when COVID came, and that's when it got hard. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I was on, you know, I'm going up and up this ladder. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's like, yo, COVID's here. You have to stop. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, what? Like, I'm just getting started. Right. Like, I really think all the time, where would it have gone if COVID never came? Yeah. Cause I got stuck in Florida. I basically went from Port, uh, Port, Portland, Maine, all the way down the coast, the East Coast. Mm-hmm. I wrapped around Florida, and I was in Tampa when COVID came. You remember when COVID came? They're like, "Yo, two weeks. Everybody yeah. chill yep. for two weeks, mm-hmm. and it'll be over." So I chilled for two weeks, and uh, me and my boy Cato, brother Ocean, love you, brother Ocean. He's out in California, great dude. And uh, we're chilling, waiting, and it never got better, you mm-hmm. know. And we're like, eventually, I was like. I have to go back home to Pennsylvania and just be there for a little bit because I can't just be in my bus, you know, just waiting for right. everybody's wearing masks. Everybody's yeah. like, yo, don't touch me. Like, don't yeah. talk to me. And it was a, the whole world changed. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, bro. So, How did that feel being that many miles away from home and, like, really not yeah. knowing what the fuck, like, your future was going to hold at that time? You are basically just trapped in <laughs> So, gra- thankfully, my father still lives in Tampa, Florida. Oh, okay. So it was actually perfect because we stopped right there, and mm-hmm. I was able to pull my bus, like, right next to his house, and we had, like, a place to chill at. And, uh, but it's still, cause like, this is my home, you know, my mom is up here and like, uh, so this is really home, but, and yeah, it was kind of trippy, man. And then I was like, well, I'll just keep it going. Like I'll go home and I'll just wait until this goes out. But man, it, it just got, you know, kind of worse and worse for a while before it got better. You remember how long that shit li- lingered around yeah. and lasted? Even until now. I mean, we're talking about 2020, we're mid 2022 and that's, sh- there's still a lingering effect. A hundred percent. You see people mask all the time. Yeah. Biden just got COVID today. Exactly. Yeah, supposed to come. He's supposed to be COVID. here today. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, I guess we don't have, le- we have a lot less traffic today because he got COVID. But. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. so, so if you, so the, li- how the timeline lands up, so COVID happens in March of 2020, you know, I'm waiting around, you know, forever. And I started skydiving in July of 2020. And then my whole life, it kind of merged. Cause I'm like, I get obsessed with skydiving yeah. and I go bananas with that, man. I start like 
you know, going out just trying to learn. I dump, I go broke doing that yeah, basically because yeah. I'm like, because it's expensive. It's expensive in the fr- in the beginning, but uh, man, I just it, my whole life kind of changed then. So well, how about right, my bad? Well, no, I was just gonna say, uh, COVID was probably a blessing for you in that regard. Then, like, do you think how quickly do you think you would have picked up on the whole idea of skydiving if that had never happened? Shit, I don't know if I would have, man. Yeah, seriously. Cool. And that's why it's weird. To, it's wild the yeah. way the w- world works, you know. I think everybody thinks COVID's a blessing in disguise at this point, yeah. you know, because and that's kind of how it always goes, man. It's like you know, it's never the end till it's the end, yeah. you know. And it's uh, all the stuff that happens. Uh, it's for a reason, man. It's for you know, it's part of the a book that you're writing yeah. of your life. It definitely so. legacy. It yeah. jump started this whole thing for us too, because like I mean, that was at a point in time where I really didn't know like what the direction of like my life was going to hold at that point. Wow. I mean, there was really no idea, like, there was no telling what the fuck was going to happen right. in the future. So it kind of backed me into a corner and almost made me feel like I was forced to figure out a different route to take in which, because I, I had during that time in life, I was working, I got laid off from my job like three times. So it was to the point where, like, I almost, well, I had a bunch of free time regardless, so I almost just had to go all in. Right. Wow. Yeah. Cool. All I really had back then, but go ahead. What so were you, uh, you decided to raise money with clothes. Yeah. What got you into, like, Building a brand with clothing and clothing and that type of aesthetic. Yeah, it's a really good question, man. And clothing has always been a part of my like. I mean, you were into the fashion, the elite socks. And yeah, shit like, like just like. Uh, <laughs> I mean, up until like you know middle school, where I'm like, yo, I'm sorry, I could like dress how I want to dress. Like, yeah, this looks good. Like this is style. Like, the expression this is, like, of it. Yeah, the expression of clothing. Yeah. And I was also really big into thrifting. And okay. At a very young age, and like just being able to go to Sally's and with a few bucks and be able to get like some banger T-shirts, yeah. you know, just yeah. by finding them. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I was like, I and so by doing the Sally's thing, so basically my whole idea was all my clothes that I made for Save the Wave are one of one. So I thrifted it and upcycled each piece of clothing. Like each clothing yeah. I do for Save the Wave is different from the rest because they're all upcycled. I go to thrift them all. And I wash them, and I print my design on them. Cool. So each piece is different, you know? So yeah. that's where it's a unique thing. It's a dope idea. Right? So everything's one of one. And I really stressed that, too, when I was doing the Save the Wave. I was like, yo, each of these pieces are one of one. They're upcycled clothes. And that's on the environmental end of it. It's perfect because they're like, they're, you're not making new clothes. Clothes are actually super bad for the environment, yeah. too, by the way. So yeah. it's like, I was like, yo, this is like, uh, this is perfect. You know, I could go. There's an, an infinite amounts of blank T-shirts and hoodies and flannels and Salvation Armies all across the world. Yeah. And if you don't buy them, they're just going to go and get, like, ripped up to be, I don't know, like, rub washcloths and shit. I don't yeah. really know. But, uh, yeah, so, but clothes just always resonated with me, man. Even, like, when I was in, like, high school, middle school, it was definitely, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, like streetwear, like Supreme and yeah. that type of shit yeah, too. Yeah. And then it kind of blossomed into just like my own thing. And yeah. my style is always changing too. It definitely like, but clothes are important, man. It's definitely how you express yourself. Yeah, yeah. it is, man. Oh, yeah. It's Especially really cool. today's day and age, it's like one of the most important, well, a lot of people feel it's one of the more important things about like your individual character. A lot of people are big into fashion today. Mm-hmm, for sure. And it's so like, think about like how the fashion has gone over the years from like 1920s. Think about how we're drafting a hundred years ago. You know, you're in like a like a suit and tie. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just completely different world. Like everybody wore a fucking fedora hat. So right. Shit. Exactly. Like from that time, everybody got the same outfit on, and they all looked the same. Were probably all equally miserable. Yeah. Yo, so for those, where this is gonna be a recording, but we're in this really dope warehouse right now. We're in the bottom of mm-hmm. the warehouse. This is like your your bat cave, your layer down here. But there's another like whole spot up there yeah. where it's called they call it kingswood right yes sir kingswood are you involved in kingswood yeah i mean i'm not really i don't so kingswood is a thing my partner my buddy uh, one of my really good friends ross Kleiman created he's out of that shout out ross we love you ross <laughs> we <laughs> love kingswood ross doggy yeah he's the best man and he started kingswood when he was a young bull uh uh uh, so Kingswood is a vintage clothing. They sell vintage clothes, um, sports cards, posters, art, furniture. So they sell all that shit. And yeah. um, but same with him. And he started when he was young, and he just kept it going. He just kept reselling stuff. Yeah. Now you know what Depop is? Yeah, yeah. He was telling me about it up yeah. there. Yeah. So Depop is a place where you resell clothes, and he has twenty two thousand followers on Depop, yeah, that's which is like a very interesting app. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't know about it unless yeah. you buy clothes on there, but. Huge following on Depop, huge into eBay. This kid, man, sits up there and grinds, man. I watch him pump out orders of just yeah, vintage clothes. That's so cool, man. And it's cool that you are surrounding yourself around, like, 
different teams for different right. areas in your life. Like yeah. you have you have your skydiving friends and you have like your your save the wave guys. You got a guy in Colorado, I think you said. What for save the wave? Yeah. I have a bunch of people in Miami. Okay. Cool. Uh oh Brother Ocean's out in California. Cal- Cal- yeah, California. Okay, California. Yeah, Brother Ocean. They're so. all over the place, all over the world, man. I'm, when I was traveling I met people from everywhere. So yeah. how do you like how do you find that team like what is your process like for connecting yourself with the right people so that you mm. can be in an element of like masterminding some of your projects i think i've always passions. been like a, a very people person i've been mm-hmm. super like into people and forming relationships yeah. and uh friendships with people and just like um i i grew up in florida actually uh i, w- I lived there till i was 10 mm. and then i came here to northeast pennsylvania because my mom was from here okay and um uh and so when my parents got divorced and we moved here, you know, we're moving all around to different schools and houses and I'm moving everywhere. I'm going all around the place, like everywhere. I'm like, so I think that was really like a way for me to like, uh, start my expression of like meeting people and like mm-hmm. having to make new friends and like, you know, just kind of like, cause like if you're sheltered your whole life, you're not going to, you know, you're a product of your upbringing, you know, yeah. how, you know, every, every, all the environments you've surrounded yourself when you're young. <sighs> And, um, so I think that kind of like started it. And then, um, yeah, man, I've always just been like a friendly guy. I always just love like making relationships and like making connections, man, because honestly, like it's a big world. There's like millions and billions of people here, but the way I look at it is if you break it down to America, right. Mm. And then you break it down to your age group, like the (coughs) 20, like if you're in your twenties in America, it's a lot, it's a very small, like there's only so many people. Right. Mm. And especially with social media, it's crazy. It's just like. Social media is a huge thing to really, like, leverage yourself oh, with people yeah. and, like, your relationships because, like, you know, I have friends on social media that, like, I, I could call and talk to for hours that I haven't even met them in person. Like, yeah. it's crazy, mm. bro. It's really wild. What better way to network with people today than social media? Social media has been uh, amazing for me yeah. and, like, you know, uh, and save the wave and, like... Actually, TikTok especially has been, like, insane for me. Like, that's where I've found a lot of my success with Save the Wave and, like, my skydiving videos, too. Yeah. Cool, man. That's something yeah. big we'll be getting into in the next couple of, I yeah. guess, weeks and months, I guess. is definitely, like, transferring. Not transferring, but, like, dipping into TikToks, like, yeah. YouTube Shorts, Reels on Instagram. Everything, like, long, it's so powerful, to, uh, bro. small form, you know, clip content of yeah. these podcasts. Cause I'm super excited for you guys, man. You guys are going to kill it. <laughs> yes, sir. It's sick, man. Like, right now, it's so dope. Yeah. We're, we're knocking podcasts. We, I was just talking to him before we started. This is going to be the most we filmed in one week. We got wow. we did you today. We did one two days ago, right? Yeah. And then we're going to be doing another one tomorrow. So Keep grinding, guys. You guys are killing it, man. Yo, Seriously. I got a question for you, brother. So, uh. Growing up, did you ever work like a traditional job or have you always been entrepreneurial? Yeah, so actually I was, uh, that's a great question because I was, I forgot to go into that too. Um, yeah, so when I was 15, I got my first job uh, as a back server at a, a kind of fancy restaurant called the Beaumont Inn okay. in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, you know the Beaumont? Yeah. So that was my first job. Like this one girl, my, my ex-girlfriend's sister's friend was like, yo, I'm working at this job. Like I made like... 150 bucks in one night and i'm 15 i'm like yo what like i could do that too <laughs> yeah. like, i can get that job yeah i was like bet let me go there let me be and, we, and i was and i started like working in the restaurant business and i started busting my ass you know serving tables and realizing and that's another thing that formed my personality a lot because i'm sitting there talking to somebody new eve every table mm-hmm. that comes in i'm like you have to read these people like how are they you know if these two mm-hmm. old people come in you're gonna be like polite and nice yeah. if yeah. these like two young people come in you're like yo what's up guys like yeah, yeah. What can I help? You know, so that really formed like my, uh, uh, just how I am with people. That's cool. Like being able to code switch, like being able to transition, like how you speak to different people. Yeah, exactly. Based on like what vibe they're giving off. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's it's a very uh, it's an asset. For it people is, man. I think a lot of people yeah. should be in the hospitality at least some point in your life. And I just I did that forever. And I also did just odd jobs. Like I was in landscaping, man. I did every. I did a lot to get money. I read so I resold stuff like shoes and clothes and stuff too. Yeah. But I was grinding, man. I always loved money, you know, making money and you know, just to, like push my limits too. But but the last time we talked, you said you're in the e-commerce space too, aren't you? You ha- you help other people build their um, what is it? Online stores for clothing yeah. brands or something yeah. like that. That's something I've been def- I've been getting into in the side a lot lately, just because I've been working with clothes and websites mm-hmm. and selling clothes on websites for so long now that like. Yeah. 
I know how it works and I have like these uh, manufacturers and producers and these, you know, drop shipping like connections yeah. that heavy. So, um, yeah, I've been doing that on the side. I actually kind of want to, you know, you know, I, you know, we're talking about the pots, like, you know, how you have yeah. all these different pots. Like yeah. this is just another one of my pots that I'm like, do I really want to make this like a, a public thing? Like, do mm -hmm. I want to do this? Like you have to be really careful about like what you make public or not. Oh, but, yeah. but no, I love it, man. I, so yeah, I do. Um, I basically like, so if you had, um, let's just take my friend, for example, um, he cliff jumps, like that's all he does. And he makes content of him jumping off these cliffs. Cool. Yeah. yeah. His name is Ryan Popoff. He's a dope ass dude. Our pop off on Instagram. Please check out his clips. I'm shouting out all these people. I love you all. Yeah. <laughs> Show love, man. It's the number one. Way. But I'm literally like, I was like, dude, when you are ready and you are ready to sell, um, you know, clothes. Bro, I found this kid when he had like two thousand followers, right? And yeah. I, his his jumps, I'm like, dude, you are wild. Like, yeah. I'm, you're gonna go places. <laughs> like, la like I, this is a crazy story, actually. And la like ten days ago, he just hit ten thousand followers. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's which sick. is a yeah. huge milestone for people, you mm -hmm. know, influencers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And um, today, I just checked his Instagram. He has twenty six thousand. Oh yeah, he's from around so here. So in ten days, Texas. Oh okay, got gotcha. you. Gotcha. In ten days, bro, this kid went from ten thousand. Like he took a long time for him to get to ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. But then we just went from ten thousand to twenty six, twenty eight thousand mm. followers in ten days. How about it? It's just crazy, it's bro. That, it's getting over that initial hump. I think it is it's like when you go from your local people and like yeah. friends and family members viewing your shit to like the world pushing right. your content out on different platforms. Which is a trippy thing when it happens, man. Yeah. You're like, yo, this is wild. Yeah. When you finally like realize that like people that aren't just like people that fuck with you obviously are watching your shit. That's such a great feeling. Like, some bro, of the, that's crazy. Most of the subscribers and shit we've been getting recently are all just random people. Uh -huh. It's such a good feeling. Bro, just wait for it, man. You guys are in for a ride. It's like you can't even fathom that. Like, think about 10,000 people watching you. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. crazy, like, doesn't bro. Even make sense. Think about that number, 10,000. Like, damn, yeah. that's and crazy. That, those, like, couple niche millions, groups, like, damn. Those niche groups, though, it's like, no matter where you do it on Instagram, like, if it's an Instagram page or a YouTube channel, like, people will group to that because there's so many people out there. That fuck with what, like, that guy's doing, and they right. can't really get it from anybody else. Exactly. Only a select number of people really yeah. willing to put their yeah. life on the line like that. Yeah, that's and I, cool. But yeah, and to go back to the e-commerce thing, but I told him, basically, I'm like, yo, when you're ready, like, to have, like, if you want clothes, I can make him a whole completely custom website yeah. and sell everything for him. You know, all I need is, I just need to get him some samples of some clothes and stuff, but if he gives me the green light, like, I could run his whole shop for him. Mm. And I don't even have to touch the clothes. Like, I have a guy that will make all, you know, I just have these connections, so it's like... yeah. But I'll get a piece of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm going to get a few bucks, but I'm making it easy for him. So all he has to do is focus on jumping off cliffs and making his content, yeah, mm -hmm. he which is all he should do focus on because that's what will get more people and followers yeah. following him. But then he's selling clothes and then he's making money so he could keep doing his thing. Yeah, and man. like my uh, manufacturer is making money because he's printing the clothes and like my distributors shipping them. I'm taking the small piece, but that's kind of like where I, I kind of want to, I had this idea of making a thing called rocket ship studios, okay. which could be like my creative section. Cause I've always done creative work. I actually went to college for two years at Wilkes for uh, digital design and media art. With okay. Minor oh, marketing. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Pretty cool, man. So I actually dropped out to do save the wave. Yeah. I saw the video on your YouTube. Go shout yeah. out. Go, go fuck with the YouTube. Yeah. Go too. see it. If you really want to dive into me, my, there's a bunch of cool shit on my YouTube, but, um, yeah, man, it's just there's endless possibilities with the with social media, man. It's crazy. I'll actually I wanted to say too. I'll never forget when I was doing Save the Wave, and I finally got to Florida, and so like I started from nothing in Maine. Like I started with like uh, you know fifteen hundred followers in Maine, and yeah. by the time I was in Florida, I had like close to ten thousand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was in Florida like, at a Publix, and I'll never forget this girl's like, "Yo, are you Wavy Snell?" I'm like, "Yo, what? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, how do you wow. like, I follow you on TikTok?" I'm like, "Yo, that's so weird." I'm not gonna sit here and think like act like it get that happens to me all the time. Yeah. But that one time I have like a f the few times that I was like, "Yo, that's so trippy that like this yeah, girl just like." I heard you a long time ago. I remember I was at Valley West. I was at Valley West from like eighth grade to eleventh grade, and then I was switching back and forth in schools and stuff like that. But I remember mm -hmm. seeing. Savion put me on to you, Sanders. Oh, I love Savion, man. Yeah, shout out to Savion. I love um, you, Savion. But I seen on a bunch of people's Snapchat, like shirts, yeah. Save the Wave stickers. I'm like, yo, who is this kid? Yeah. Right? And oh, then, yeah. you know, a couple I years later. I tried, man. I blew, I put my all into it. Yeah. You did a good job, though, man. Like, I heard of Save the Wave. I've seen stickers on cars all over the place. I've seen people yeah. wearing shirts yeah. before I even knew who yeah, you were. Yeah, that's dope, man. So, 
How about that? That's like amazing cool. too, because you know, like what you're doing is bigger than you at that point. Yeah. Especially like when you run into somebody, somebody halfway across your fucking country that knows who you are. Like that's a big, that's a big. Yeah, that was trippy, there. man. It really was. So, yo, that's what cool. do you think? Uh, like for because a lot of creative people watch our podcast. We have a lot of friends who yeah. are, are right on the cusp of just taking that leap and doing yeah. their own thing. So, what do you think? Um, is the best way to go about building Ooh. a brand? That's a that's a good question, man. Like, how do you creatively build a brand that yeah. build that is dr- attracting a community? Yeah, behind you with a message that's important too. I think the most important thing is being true to yourself. You know, I mean, like you can't fake it, man. Seriously, yeah. you can't fake it at all. And that's where I had a real a lot of trouble with Save the Wave because when I got really into skydiving and flying, it got to a point where I was like. You know, I, I I was giving up on 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 my baby. I'm on save the wave. You know, I stopped I stopped believing in myself and mm-hmm. like you know, and that shit will tear you up. But um, you know, cause like I can't fake it. I can't sit on my social media and be like, yo, say you know, if I'm not really feeling it, you know what I mean. I'm not gonna do it if yeah. I'm not really like I'm not gonna be unauthentic and be like that's the worst. So I really had like um like uh like some demons like f- I'm fighting demons here because I'm like mm-hmm. yo like I feel like I'm like you know it, it, it's this trials and tribulations of shit and mm-hmm. you know over time it, it worked itself out and I'm trying to learn how to balance everything but be true to yourself uh, consistency is the most important thing you know yep. being super consistent with yourself and like with starting a brand like just make sure that you're consistent as a motherfucker man like just keep that thing rolling and. Uh, yeah, be true to yourself. Consistency and be true to yourself and, you know, just willing to try, you know. Mm-hmm. You can't, you, you can't, you got to try, you know, because yeah. you can't just like, you know, um, I, I saw this one thing where it was like, you can't just, if you release a song, you can't just put it on your Snapchat story once and think that it's going to blow up. You got to really like put it out there and be yeah. like, yo, yeah. listen to my song. Like, yo, this is my song. Like, go up to people and be like, yo, this is my song. Yeah. Here's a music video for my song. Cool. You know what I mean? Yo, yeah. listen to my song. You know, just yeah. like. You gotta really. You can't just put it like yo here and then like hide in the corner and hope that people, because nobody will go out and like actually like start like looking at it. You mm-hmm. know, you gotta like really be like, yo, this is what I'm doing. Like, mm-hmm. go check this shit out. Be proud of it. Be, be proud, proud of what of you're it. producing. Oh, yeah. Be proud of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. I think that definitely makes people want to tune in more. Like when you show how passionate you truly are about what it is that you're doing. If you're just mm-hmm. fucking off and just doing it just to do it, I think people will really see that. Like yeah, a hundred percent, man. And you can't be scared to like. I think a lot of people, even myself, uh, you know, are nervous about like their friends or family yes. like, judging them, which is crazy because they're your friends and family. Yeah. But yes. it's just like if you push, pre- like you know, we were talking about pushing. Um, beyond our local like your small group Mm -hmm. like the bigger those groups get like you know you might be scared of these 20 people that are closest to you but after that there's 200,000 people that really want to see what you're doing Mm -hmm. you know so that's a cool way to you know look at it that's really cool man i feel like people could like sniff out and uh um authentic or like not not being unauthentic unauthentic people yeah Yeah. i think that's a hard to say but yeah yeah. i think people can sniff that out like when you're when you're you're acting out of character it's almost like they could see that yeah and they don't want to engage with that i feel like i notice that a lot of times when i'm just scrolling on instagram or tiktok yeah. like that don't seem right yeah, yeah you know you're just mean? like you know you're just doing yeah. that it seems kind of corny even like way. you know the fake prank videos you're yeah. like yo that's just some fake shit yeah, like yeah. come on don't waste no doubt. my time and yeah, it's, no probably, doubt. it's probably it's worse crazy. to be there behind the scenes too like we just get to see like that the fakeness on camera right. imagine having to see that and then dealing with the opposite reality of that in real life like if yeah. you're in somebody like that circle and it happens so much in these days of social media and oh, just yeah. wanting clout yeah. and just wanting you know just to i don't know just being unauthentic with yourself so so bro if you're if your brain was a pie chart like if you had skydiving and flying Ooh. and save the wave and e-commerce like what are what do you think how do you think that sectioned off Lately, after you got over yeah. a hump of the pots. Yeah. No, I think right now, I think um, another thing I got really into is, like, my fitness, like, being healthy. Yeah, you I've know, seen Working that. out yeah. all the time. That's dope. I'm in the gym, like, every night because that's actually, like, when COVID uh, – actually, honestly, it's a little after COVID hit, but – I started getting really healthy, like into my like, my health, you know, and like my my physical health and my mental health. And that's um, dope, bro. Yeah, so that's Love a big that. part of my life too. Yeah, you know, I'm in the gym I, if my schedule allows, and I'm not traveling four or five times a, in the during the week. Yeah, yeah, man. And you know, I'm pushing weights, and I'm in the sauna, and I'm like, I see you've been hitting the bag speed too. Speed bag, man. Yeah. I love the speed bag. Yeah. That even has a little pie in my chart. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's, speed bag? it's hard to say, man. So uh, right now, I'd say flying has been because like you can't slack off of flying you got to like really pay attention to it right oh, yeah. so yeah. that's been like my biggest that's probably been like my 
like 50% of my time. Half the charge is yeah, flying. It, right, right there. 50% is gone. Yeah. And it's actually, no, I'd say 25 <laughs> flying, 25 skydiving. Okay. I'd say uh, save the wave. I'd probably give it like, like honestly, like a, so I got 50% gone. Do a mental math. And I'll do, tw- I'll do 20% for save the wave. Okay. But honestly, it deserves a lot more of my yeah, time okay. and energy. It does, which it'll, it, it's happening. You know and I'm coming mm-hmm. with down to the warehouse? I have finally have this space because I just got this space like together, like two weeks ago, honestly, okay. this space, because cool, I've been all running all around the warehouse. We're trying to fix stuff up. Yeah. So now that I'm here, I'm going to dedicate a lot more time to save the wave. But, um, so I'll give that 20%. So that's 70. I'll do like the rest, just myself and, you know, my, my mental health, you know, making my money, uh, working out, my family. I had a death in the family recently. So my grandfather, rest in peace, Pop D. He was a badass. Okay. So that I'm dealing with a lot of family stuff right now. But okay. um, uh, so that's kind of the rest, just me and myself and my, nice. my working out, my eating, my mom, my mom, my sisters, my family. Yeah, so. but think about how much that does, like just working out and prioritizing your own mental health and your physical health. Like that affects everything else in a positive oh, way, yeah, too. Like that does. spills over into all it's that. It's such a shit. good investment in yourself. As no when you're doubt, healthy. brother. No yeah, doubt. And it helps your brand, your brand out so much, too. Like we were just talking about authenticity. You can see how genuinely happy and like fulfilled you feel and like portray yourself to be in all your content and shit too it definitely right, it just man. pans out well in general yeah no that's definitely a thing man because like there was times with like save the wave man it got hard to the point where i'm like uh jeez man like this is like you know like i i can't like you know because i gained so many followers from save the wave so i'm sitting here thinking people just want to see me doing save the wave mm-hmm. but it's like I'm so in love with skydiving and flying, so it's, like, hard to put, like, a happy medium on both. Yeah. Especially with, like, the whole saving the world and, like, you know, ruining the ozone and, like, just mm-hmm. thinking about all, like, the people thinking. It. So you're constantly, like, you know, you're your own. You're the biggest judge of yourself. Yeah. You yes. know what I mean? So I'm yeah. sitting here, like, oh, like. Uh, and it gets stressful, man, try, oh, having yeah. a following on social media and trying to keep, like, uh, you know, these people entertained or keep mm-hmm. people, like, updated with your life. It's, like, like there's points... I have a really bad habit with being like I would not posting anything. Like there's like like once COVID started till now, like you should you could see like I've I just have been slacking a lot with social yeah. media, but it's just because I need to worry about my health. I mean myself mm-hmm. and my health and my family. That's cool though. That's definitely important, man. You got to prioritize. Shit and we like have that. time. Yeah, we have time, we bro. We are young men. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, I don't want, you know, I want Save the Wave to be a thing when I'm 70, you know? Yeah. So, I, I, and that's where I, I fought a lot of demons, too, because, like, I was like, yo, I got to save the world, like, this year. Yeah. Like, when I started, I'm like, yo, I got to save the world, like, right now. Like, I got to do this. And so I would drive myself crazy because mm-hmm. I'd be, like, putting all this pressure on myself when in reality, like, I'm the only one that's doing it to myself. Like, mm-hmm. nobody else is up at night thinking, yo, Josh Nell's really fucking up right now. Like, Yeah, right. So. But yourself. Yeah, but it's exactly. good to be self-critical, I think. It I think is. That's what pushes a lot of the most ambitious people. It does. And people who are the most accomplished and do the most things is because there's always that little voice in the back of their head like, I could be doing more. Mm-hmm. I could be doing more. And it yeah. puts so much pressure and a fire under mm-hmm. your ass. Like, you just got to move, man. Yeah. So sure. it's a gift and a curse. It is. It's a gift and a curse. But uh, Being able to balance it out is important, though. Oh. Yeah, brother. So I think, uh, like, yo, are you, um, like, do you think you're a structured person? Do you think you had to develop some organizational skills to put yourself in these posi- like in this type of environment so that you could, like, consciously put some effort into some of, your, some of your endeavors and stuff like that? Or do you just go with the flow and just figure it out as you go? I think it's a little bit of both, yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. I definitely am not, like, super organized, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's times. It's a dope space, things. though, bro. Like, it looks like it you is. got some shit figured out. Down and there. I'm super stoked about it because, um, you know, there's a lot of space, you know, for me to, like, breathe yeah. and, like, work and create, you know. And, like, I, when, you, when you know how we were setting up and I was, like, you know, this having your own environment and the energy in your environment is mm-hmm. super important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm super lucky to have this space. And. Shout out Ross because he found it and, you know, um, he's like the king of this place. But, I mean, this is a 10,000 square feet uh, fucking warehouse. Yeah. And there's just like um, so many possibilities. So, like, I'm still technically living with my parents, but I'm st- I have a huge warehouse where I could come and yeah. create and work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. It's pretty Very dope. Important. It's, pretty better, dope. it's definitely better for you to separate your home environment from your work environment as well. I've noticed that a lot in doing what I do. Sure. Yeah, it really is. I don't feel nearly as productive at my house as I do like when I'm in the studio, like where yeah. we typically mm-hmm. film. Facts. 
There's like yeah. those little tricks to be able to shift where like the attention of your mind is. Oh, like yeah, if you're yeah. at, if you're at home sitting in your bed, it's hard for you to save the world, right? Yeah. Like you just want to sleep and yeah. lay down yeah. and shit like that. But at the same time, it's not easy to work out in your bed in your bedroom and stuff like that. So yeah. by putting yourself in the gym, it's like all right, now I'm in this mode, and like you're kind of biohacking yourself and you know, yeah, for sure, changing your environment. And I remember the like when I first started Save the Wave, it was such like a random like I just put all my eggs in one basket. Like I saved up so much money like serving tables and like doing this stuff, and I put it all into like my bus and yeah. my clothes and just this project. And you could tell, man, like I like you learn. I learned like quick, you know, like what it's like having a business, what it's like living in a bus, yep. like a hot bus during the summer when it breaks down in the middle of the road. And you can't get it started, and all this. Sh- I have so much shit. I have yeah. no AC. I'm sweating balls. I miss my family. Mm-hmm. Like, if reality happens quick, man. Yeah, but you learn a lot like, about yourself in those situations. Yeah, you too, do. Bro. You no threw doubt. yourself to the sharks, man. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> you got to figure out how to fucking sink or swim. You know yeah. what I mean? But man, I actually always loved like the idea of traveling too. I was just about to ask you that. Like, where are you at with that? I know you said you traveled to. Yeah. What's that place called? Maldives. Maldives. These, like, I see another one there near Greenland. Yeah, that was uh, all Iceland. throughout the U.S. Iceland, yeah, Europe. So I actually would That's like sick. to um, so cool. backtrack a little bit. So I've always been really into um, likewise like Travel. traveling and the yeah. idea yeah. of it. And um, there was this kid, Cookie Joe was his name, and he's my boy now. And um, when I was young, like in high school, like this kid, Cookie Joe, like you'd see him, like he was he did uh, this europe trip and he was in the craziest places like you know, like near these volcanoes like crossing these crazy long bridges in switzerland like yeah. you know in all these trippy places and it's a local kid so i'm like yo how is this kid traveling like this like how is he doing this you know what i mean because i want to do it too like and so i was like i i hit him up i'm like yo like what's up like let's let's travel together like i want to go on your next trip yeah, he's man. like yo what's up and then we became boys like we nice. so um when I was 18, we went to Europe and backpacked through Europe for 10 days. Where'd you go? So we flew into Copenhagen, Denmark. And when I talk uh, about backpack, we literally had this, like, a backpack on. Yeah. So flew into Copenhagen, Denmark, um, partied in Copenhagen and explored <laughs> Copenhagen. That's Bro, I'm 18, <laughs> yeah. like, sending it. Like, we're sleeping in parks, sleeping oh, on trains man, and buses. Yeah. And it's, like, a 10-day trip. And it's just me, Cook, and this other kid, Chris. And we're just sending it. From uh, Copenhagen to Brussels, Belgium, Brussels to Amsterdam, Netherlands, Amsterdam to uh, Paris. Yeah, I see this. I'm the Paris picture kid. right there. Yeah, yep. Yo, you gotta int- introduce Joe, me to that dude. guy, bro. Yo, he's a legend, man. Cookie Joe, and I have so many like, <laughs> dude. Like, he's dope. I went to uh, last year. I went to uh, went to Europe too. We did like a backpacking trip. Yeah, I met a kid who was an exchange student. And he was on my football team for a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was I was talking about him, dude. I'm super passionate about travel. He's yeah. like, yo, come stay with me, bro. He yeah. lives in uh, Berlin, Germany. So that's lit. Flew out to Germany. Out it's there such a different th- world out there, dude, right? It's so good for your perspective, bro. Because oh it puts you in God. such a different level of thinking. It's crazy. Like, you're in yeah. survival mode, but you're also seeing the beauties of the world. You're meeting different people. Yeah. Bro, we went to Germany, Berlin, Germany. Mm. Beautiful city. Mm. I mean, it's the coolest, bro. Yeah, and then um, we stayed there for like a week. And then we went to uh, Athens, Greece. And wow. dude, Athens, bro, you're literally in the land of warriors. Yeah. You're in the, I was in on Acropolis where they were worshiping gods here. And like, wow. the people are different, man. Yeah, and the energy. It's, it's, you feel it in your bones. It's, I felt like... Dude, I remember this one night. We sat. We, we stayed in hostels, right? Yeah, that's what I did too. And he went out to go get a, um, a derna, bro. Them shits are gas too. Derna's... Uh, it's, like a, it's like a Turkish gyro kind oh, of. Oh, okay. They're so good. Right, and I was, he left, and he met a girl, so he was doing his thing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was meditating on a balcony, and I opened my eyes, and I saw Acropolis, right? Wow. And it's just lit up during the nighttime in Athens, right? And I could feel, and this is going to sound stupid, but I could feel, like, the warrior energy just surging wow. in me. Wow, that's, that's like, not real. And it was that's real. so cool, bro. And I was just around these people, and they were telling me about, like memento mori and yeah, how death, man. and how these people who would conquer these lands had slaves on the back of their horses to remind them that one day they're going to die. Wow. So they have to kind of snap back into reality and to check their ego. And the, the fact that people like this long ago 
yeah. had these type of values and virtues is beautiful to me. The stoic virtues that originated in these places is the coolest thing. And then we went to Netherlands, uh, uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam, bro. Ooh, that's a crowd place, right? <laughs> <laughs> then it got crazy. And then that's it just when it gets up. crazy, bro. So. That's when it gets crazy. Amsterdam's a special place. Yeah. How but long yo, did you say that? That's energy, though. That's pure energy that yeah, you're bro. feeling, bro. It's and you, different. you get surrounded by it, bro. Those are like the people that were that there before you. Like they were, were yeah. there were warriors there, <laughs> man. It's crazy, bro. That's a real thing. There's some deep history in these places, and Europe's crazy because you can go to all these places, like and it's all close together. It's, it's like America, yeah. but each state is its own country, yes. and yeah. it's just trippy because. Because, like, you're moving around and, like, it's beautiful, bro. Like, it's, like, mother, it's, like, history and, and, and these crazy, like, ah, Amsterdam's crazy. Like. It is. Dude, Amsterdam's a different place, bro. Different. You, you go gotta go. You go. You go out right and it's, like, 11 o'clock at night and there's guys pulling up to you on bikes. Go, ecstasy. Yes. I have it all, my friend. Everything. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, bro, get away from me. Like, Shoving it like scared. this. Yo, Yo, here. It's crazy. And then you'll see people tripping around, like, on the street. You don't uh -huh. even know what they're on, bro. Yeah, no. Go, go down these streets it's and there's real. There's it gets these, real. There's these red rooms with just women just yeah, offering the, the themselves. Yeah, the red light district. Yo. Red light district, yeah. Me Dude. and my friends walk through there like, yo, this is different. It's freaky, bro. Yeah. It's, it's so much different. The world, it, it, oh, man, it's and a beautiful thing. That's why I I, I, I advise people to go travel, like get out there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Save, 50, save 1500 bucks, get cheap flights out to Europe, and go pack pack. Go to hostels. You know, get a hostel for 20 bucks for a night and just yeah. go see what the fuck is out there, man. Yeah, man. Because there's scary, so man. many people, and you're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to wake up and be like, yo, there is. I feel like a warrior right now. Like, yeah. that's the type of shit that happens. <laughs> yeah. I remember there's a park in uh, Amsterdam called Vondel Park in Amsterdam, and we slept there one night. We just had such a long night. We oh, were man. off the shits. We were just like, yo, like I, just, I just, like a whole different person hatched for myself yeah. at this yeah. one point. Like I'm like, yo, this is like a lot. I'm sweaty. I'm tired. Like, and the food out there is different too. It's like you're not having these American meals that nah, fill you up and yeah. you feel good. Like sometimes you're like, yo, I'm not feeling good, man. <laughs> I miss home. I like my bed. Yeah. But um, yeah, one night we just like we're just like. We were just it, we were just creatures like like crawling around <laughs> and we're like yo this is we can't we got to get to Paris I at swear. one point we're like we got to get to Paris as soon as possible because I'm done with Amsterdam like yeah. that's a good way crazy. to put it you're just a creature bro me in Berlin yeah uh, we were surviving off of oranges and peanut butter <laughs> with bread that's <laughs> yeah. all we had for like because four the days food's so weird and yeah. shitty man yeah it's yeah like shitty well, stuff. you were saying too down there they live by like the day they. Just they go shopping basically every day. Yeah, and keep mm -hmm. shit, and it's all basically fresh. Yeah, I think um, in Berlin, Germany, the idea of like bulking up when you go grocery shopping is kind of mm -hmm. like a, a foreign upon. thing. You yeah. don't really do that. They have small refrigerators. That's like and American thing. Yeah, so that makes sense. Since they since they commute a lot in Berlin, I'm sure it's like this in other cities as well. But since they commute commute a lot, um, one of their daily things or weekly things is to go grocery shopping. You know, yeah. they do it like once, twice, three times a week. You know, wow. they just get fresh food, and a lot That's of it's so fresh, cool. like. You and know? like Italy, they have like siestas. Like they'll just take naps. Everybody, they'll ring a bell in the middle of town in Italy, and like everybody will take a nap for an hour, and then they'll just wake up and keep what? going. Dude, that's, that's so sick. crazy. That sounds wild. Siestas, or Spain, or some like, that probably all over the place. Where'd you go? You went to uh, Iceland. So that yeah, that was like that's kind of a cheat because we were just there um, to uh, we just stopped there on our way to Europe. Oh, okay. So I didn't really get to explore, but dude, Iceland is a place I really want to like, yeah. explore, explore. Was it just like a layover? Is yeah, that how layover. That works? Same here. Yeah. I, I I was in um, Zurich, Switzerland, in my layover for like six hours. Yeah. Really. All I got to do was look out the window, though. Yeah. And it still looks beautiful, but yeah. yeah. Still. But even just being there, you're like, yo, I'm here. I'm yeah. here right now. Like, this is sick. I want. I wish I could go explore, yeah. but um, yeah. Man, there's like, look at that map, man. There's so much out there. Like, I, I want to go through South America. I want to just yeah. like. Literally get a backpack and a motorcycle and go to South America and just see what's up. Because oh, bro, there's spot? so many nice people, man. Like, is that your next yeah. spot you want to go to South America? I think America? South America is calling cool. my name. I think, you know how we're talking about the intuition? I think South yeah. America has been like. That's dope. Bro, I want to go to. Uh, there's this artist, Junior H. He's a, a, a Spanish artist. Bro, he's so good. Like, yeah. he vibes. Everybody that's like Spanish will know Junior. He's so chill. But I'm just like, yo, I listen to him. I'm just jamming out. I'm like, I need to go to South America. Yeah, just brother. Get on a bicycle and go around. I'm being drawn to Asia. I got to go to Asia. The thing that yeah. you got here, man, like, that's one of the coolest fucking things I've seen in a while. I need to do some shit. Everyone like needs a map. Everybody yeah. needs a map of the whole world in their room. Yeah, but Seriously. cool. 
Not cool. even just that. Like, I like how you, like, thumbtack all the different uh-huh. spots that you've been to. Like, that shit's so cool to me. Like, I would love to fucking... Where'd you get that Make it a goal to fill My mother got it for me for Christmas one year. That's dope. It's a good yeah. idea, man. I'm gonna have to get a, a map for my room. You really need That's one, dope. man. Because, yo, you can get... You'll just get lost in it. Because <laughs> look at all these countries, man. Yeah, right? Yeah, there's no way you can... Like, there's gonna always gonna yeah. be a country you're seeing, and you're like, I didn't even know that was a place that was real, you know? And we're on the smallest little pinpoint. The there smallest the little pin. We're, we're microorganisms. It's nuts. But we have this at our disposal, and I'm not going to go my whole life just staying in one spot. Like, I need to see what's up. Yeah. I want to see what's up. That's probably the coolest way you can live your life, man, is literally just, like, is there anybody out there that's fucking crossed every, not, uh, obviously not every inch, but has visited every single country? Yeah, 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 there's people exist. There was this girl, you know, Seek Discomfort that Brandon was telling you about? There was a girl that dates one of the guys that owns that, and she was the youngest woman ever to... Wow. She just did that soon. She just did that recently. Yeah, it was like a year or so ago. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty dope. So, the thing, people do it now. They're trying to do it as young as possible. Mm. There's this pilot that's trying to be the youngest pilot that goes to every country or something. Mm. Wow, dude, that's so cool, man. So, piloting's been a big thing, too, because I'm like, yo, because I love traveling, right? And so... That makes sense. Those piloting could... with each other. Dude, like... If I, you know, like I was talking about that, like if I find a billionaire, you know, I said before, like, dude, if I'm on call and I'm bringing this billionaire, he's going to go to somewhere foreign and exotic as yeah. fuck. Mm-hmm. And he's going to pay for me to stay there, too. Hmm. So that's sick. You know you what I mean? To I'm going to see the sit, world. I'm going to see the world. I'm going to be able to fly to different. Like, yo, once I have my pilot license, I could fly from wilkes Bear and I can go have lunch in Cape May for the day. It'll take me an hour to get there. I could have a lobster roll and then fly back. Yeah. I could rent a plane for like 150 bucks an hour. Yeah. And I could fly there, bro. That's sick. Yeah, man. One yeah, day we could I'll fly. We, we humans could fly. How about to do it? A, a cockpit podcast. We're just going yeah, to do dude. <laughs> one day, let's oh, do it. Oh, 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 just talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Fuck so me. sick, actually. Fucking skydive with the mic in the hand. One year on my birthday, um, I, got a, I got a certificate to go on a plane ride. Ooh, with, yeah. Uh, and it was the one, there was the airport in, uh, is it 44 Exeter? Yeah, that's where I'm learning. That's where I'm getting my license. Oh, that's still What is it called? It's called some uh, aviation. For, uh, 44 Airport, Wyoming Valley Airport. Yeah, okay. And uh, I just went up there with some dude. And his Valley little, Aviation. Va- yeah, and his little plane. Cessna. And dude, we were like. Since the 182. I think so. I don't know what it was, but we were flying this little plane, and he took me from here to Berwick in like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. I was like, dude, what the heck? And look, everything looks so small, and it's just, yeah. man. It's trippy, man. It's crazy, dude. Dude, think about flying it and landing and taking off. Like, I'm sitting there like That's pulling crazy. yoke. Like, dude, I'm so knowledgeable. I am guarantee you right now, if I had to go to the airport, yeah, I could take off, fly around, and land by myself. I bet I 100% would That's put money cool, on man. it that I could do that. That's sick. I can't legally do that because I'm not soloed yet. I don't have my license yeah. but i'm knowledgeable enough to where i could do that like i've been in a plane where my instructor has not touched anything and i've done it like wow so that's trippy man it's cr- and i have dr- the crip- trippiest trippiest dreams of me skydiving and flying like you would never believe Dude. like of these situations where i'm just like dreaming and i'm just like yo i just was flying planes all night in my dreams is wow. it possible to do some shit like where you can fly a plane to like a desired jump destination switch out and then be the one that skydives as well yeah, that's dope. I, people have done it before. I'd love to do it. That sounds like some savage. Just shit. ghost ride the plane and shit, right? No, but that I mean, like, he could fly it to a certain point, pass mm-hmm. it off to, like, a co pilot. Okay. And be the one that that's jumps, some Red Bull you know shit right I mean? there. That'd that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Bro, this this community of, like, it, it's such a. Uh, the, these, they're really communities. They're families of these people that are into skydiving, that are into flying. Like, because yeah. there's only so many people that really actually take it on. Yeah. So it's just such a it's such a cool niche thing, and I, I'm I'm in love with it, man. I love it so much. And every time I'm at a drop zone or I'm at an airport, I feel at home. I feel like I'm right where I need to be at that yeah. point. Like yeah. I'm exactly like, and so when yeah. you find that shit, man, you gotta hold on to it. You That's gotta so hold cool on that to you it. discovered that. Like I, we were talking about earlier, like at such a weird time in life where a lot of people were losing a lot of shit. You lost a lot of shit, like with your Save the Wave business mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. But you also found something dope as fuck. And I, I, I feel like, I mean, you were touching on it before, but, like, the camaraderie and doing something like that mm-hmm. got to be very similar to, like, we were just talking about it on the podcast we do with James Delaney, but, like, the like the camaraderie that is present in fighting, the camaraderie mm-hmm. that's present in, like, the military, like, mm-hmm. how close, like, tight-knit. Because you guys know that there's, like, a chance that you go up there and you never get seen again. Down. Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, there got to be a weird... Like kind of connection, very, very, very strong connection. Between I would say this too. Like when I'm jumping, when I'm skydiving, 
You could be skydiving with a janitor and a CEO yeah. and like a, a doctor and a, just everybody. You know, you never know who it is, but you know that you're all connected with flying and yeah. skydiving. Mm. That brings you together. And so I meet all these different people that are doing all these different other stuff. But what brings us all together is jumping. And we're so passionate about it and we love it. And it's just like something that like that feeling of flight, like it's like almost like a relationship, like a girlfriend or like uh, it's just so fucking amazing. It's a drug. Man. It's a drug. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Man. And it's I have to imagine thing. like you as well as all the other people that do it, like you guys got to be some crazy motherfuckers. Yeah, probably, everybody has to be crazy. You could probably a little bit bring crazy. out a lot of different like aspects of each other. Like those yeah. are probably the exact group of people you would want to have together just to be able to like talk and figure shit out. Yeah, it's Wild crazy, bro. And so there's these things called boogies. So the Maldives thing, it was mm-hmm. called the uh, the Maldives boogie. So a boogie is a, a skydiving event where people where skydivers get together. Actually, there's one coming up in Chicago. I'm going August um, 3rd. I'm trying to find a quick sponsor, actually, so I can get it paid for because I really don't want to pay for it myself. Hit them up. Yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> if anybody wants to sponsor the trip, let me know. <laughs> but um, I, um, I'm i trying. I'm, but it's called Summerfest. It's one of the biggest boogies in America, and there's going to be, like, hundreds of skydivers there in Chicago, uh, Skydive wow. Chicago. And it's literally just going to be like, it's a week long thing. I'm only going for the last four days, mm. but uh, it's just going to be a bunch of us jumping together, partying at night, jumping during the day. That's fucking Vibing. Sick. I wonder learning. how that would look. I didn't even know people did shit like that. Oh, it's crazy. I'll show you a video of these people after the podcast. It's like, dude, they have DJs. There's literally hundreds of skydivers that just come that together. That dope as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I said, conversation, everybody bro. knows. Skydiving. Everybody <laughs> comes together with skydiving. Like, <laughs> Everybody's just exactly it's a family. Ready to go. <laughs> and at <laughs> night, like you're not jumping, so we're getting, you know, yeah. you have a few beers, you know, you're having, you're getting a little fucked up, and people come from all over the world, though. Some, some, some people. So, oh, to be fun. a skydiver. I believe it, man. That boogie, <laughs> boogie, <laughs> boogie down. down. Perfect yeah. name for it, too. Yeah, Fuck right. Yeah, that's literally a boogie, man. Fuck, I don't know, man. I, I try to like really think what in people. Find or can't find that to be okay because I get terrified fucking standing on like bridges and shit. Yeah, like literally, it's different. like it's like my biggest fear yeah. is fucking heights and shit. A lot of people are like that, man. I wonder why though. I was. Like, it's it's funny actually. Like I I invite so many people to come skydiving. I'm yeah. like, yo, come, and they'll be like, yeah, I'll come. I'm like, let's do it, and I'll be like, okay, come, and I'll I'll wake up and be like, yo, you're coming skydiving. They'll be like, oh man, like this happened. Oh, I can't. shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what they all say. Like I you know whatever. Another yeah. day, right? Another day, you'll go skydiving. Like whatever. Okay. I'm like whatever. I got that on my bucket list. I wrote a bucket list when I was like yeah. 20, and yeah. one of them was skydiving. Yeah, that's good, man. Too. You should. Damn, sure. it's a lot of people's. And it's okay, like if if you just go once, like that's what that's fine. Like, it's perfectly cool. That's what a lot of people do is they go once and they that they know what it's like and that's good enough for them. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, yo, I want to do this. Like yeah. I want to be a jumper. Like I want to know how to. Like I want to have my own parachute. That's cool, man. And yo, the feeling of having your own canopy and like human flight, like it's like you're a bird up there, yeah. man. Because humans aren't supposed to fly. We're not. Oh, We're mammals. We're supposed to be on the ground. We're but not so when we fly. break the rules, there's something about that that yeah. just gets your like endorphins going you know mm. your adrenaline that feeling of like yo i'm breaking the, i'm flying we've flying. always wanted to though there's like sketches in da vinci's book of like flying machines uh-huh. and stuff like that yeah no it's 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 i think it's it's a beautiful thing man what we're interesting you? creatures yeah i wish it was a little safer i wish it was like uh, you know because it's so sad that these that there's these people that do you know yeah. there's a 22 year old kid that just died flying a plane he graduated from marywood graduated from valley aviation in 44 he oh, just wow. died last uh this past weekend um banner flying in ocean city you know the banners the yeah planes that go by? Oh, yeah. it's really dangerous apparently i didn't know that actually until this weekend uh i had an, oh, a, a wow. lesson a flying lesson on wednesday and my instructor said that because i told her about you know um uh, the skydivers that died and she was like yo we lost somebody too like this kid 22 year old kid just he was picking up a banner and just messed up and plane crashed and he died so it's like it's crazy you know because i'm like yo like i'm really getting into this like this uh, you know it's not as safe as everything you know being on a computer and like selling stuff all day don't you think that's part of it though like don't you think that that's kind of in a weird fucked up way like what calls you to do it to begin with it is it is part of it. And you know that the whole yeah. time. Every time I jump, I know that, like, you know, and that's when it get, the adrenaline gets going. And there's times where you do screw up, and you're like, yo, that's close. And you learn from it. Yeah. And you're like, I'm never going to do that again. But uh, I had a cutaway. I had a cutaway my canopy one time. It was uh, it was my 55th jump, and I had a beautiful canopy over my head. 
and I was, you know, doing fine. But what I did was I decompressed it. Like I pressed the brakes. These are my toggles. I pressed the brakes yeah. and I went up and immediately went into a right turn without letting the canopy inflate with air. So the canopy just started, I started going like this and I'm only at 2000 feet. So I'm like, fuck, I'm like, yo, so I, I cut away my canopy. So I pulled the cord. I cut away my canopy. Um, luckily my can I had a thing called an air hook. So my, main canopy was connected to my reserve canopy and it pulled out my reserve immediately. And I like landed with my reserve canopy and mm -hmm. like right after it inflated. Cause I was so low to the ground. Yeah. And, uh, so that was like a huge adrenaline rush. Cause I'm like, yo, dude, how quick do you have to think? That. Like you're quick. flying at a hundred some if you don't, miles you're dead. per hour and you just yeah. have to think on the fly. Literally if you don't, you're think dead on the fly. That's yeah. part of the high Literally. though to it. I feel like is like that problem solving and like oh, man. that constant yeah. fear that like you could be and fucking And staying in the moment, moment and having that moment of present momentness. Yeah. Like when you're skydiving, you're not thinking about, you know, my aunt Sally Mae you got like yeah. stuck in the tree. Like you're thinking yeah. about like. Skydiving. You're thinking about, yo, we are falling 120 miles an hour. Like, you're looking into the person's eyes. You're like, yo, we are out here just falling right now. Like, free falling. Whoa. Like, going through clouds. Like, one, like if you have your canopy open and you see somebody fall, like, they're going quick, man. Yeah. Like, I have some videos of that. It's, it's just like, it's a trip. What I is, love it. What is that feeling like of just free falling through, like, the <laughs> sky like that? It's the best feeling in the world, man. That fucking, that blows what? my mind. I can't even think about that, yeah. man. That sounds so crazy. Just imagine, yeah. like, fucking just, there's just nothing. Poof, like falling. Just falling. Like, like, you know, like, Dude, the fucking I've gone over 200 miles an hour. Yeah, that's insane. Like this. What the fuck? Through like, the sky. At what? Yeah. Uh, how high are you, like? Uh, I start from 13,500 feet. 200, 200 miles per hour, just from 13,000 feet. <laughs> Dude, like, have you ever fucked around with like the wingsuits or anything? I'm about to get into it a little bit, but I am not. See, dude, it's the the base jumping community took a big hit this week with yeah. these three guys dying. Like, three in five days is like, yo, that's a lot, man. It really yeah. makes you think about like, yo, you could you could die, yeah. you yeah. could die. These guys died. This kid, it's no joke. Maxime isn't here anymore. It's 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 just like, it's really sad, man. He's a 31 year old kid, like. Just like he 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 expected to land, he had his like, you know his like you know lunch waiting for him. Maybe like he had a girlfriend. I've been talking to her, trying to help her with her heartbreak. Like I, it's just like, but oh, dude, it's just it's hard. It's a really like. So yeah, I kind of want to get into wingsuiting, but yeah. I'm I, the whole community right now is a lot really like yo, like this is real. Gotta take it easy for it's a, a realistic. Yeah. Like it's like it's a wake up call. Like yo, you. You're playing with, you know, your life every yeah. time you're doing this. Fuck yeah, man. There's but not many things like that. Man. There isn't. There isn't, man. And That's it's pretty crazy, man. Being in the sport for the past two years, too, I've seen how many people have died, and it's just like, this is trippy, man. So I try to be as safe as possible. Right now, I'm still just skydiving like a regular skydiver. I haven't base jumped yet. I haven't put a wingsuit on, and I'm okay with that because that time will come, and uh, when it does... I'm going to be as safe as I possibly could be. Yeah. I'm going to make sure it's something I want to do. I'm going to make sure it's something that I'm, I'm willing to risk, you know, because. How did those guys land, though? They so just have, like, the squirrel suits. Like, do they have a parachute? what they do is they come to a point, and then they, they flare, and their suits are able to get them high enough to an altitude where they could deploy their, pan, their canopy, oh, okay. and then their canopy will just come out. I see. Oh, wow. So they flare, like, really high. Uh, yeah, dude, those guys are, they call it proximity flying. They're nuts, man. It's, 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 yeah. that's really the most dangerous is dude, proximity. We got to get one of those guys on a podcast. Oh, yeah, that's dude, cool. I could get that easy. I have a lot of interesting skydivers if you want them. That's yeah. like the best people to talk to because it's just like trying to fucking pick that apart. Like, what in your mind causes right. you to want to do yeah, some shit? What kind trippy. of psychology do you, you should do, you to do some I have shit to like do see my boy Johnny DeJulius. Uh, <laughs> he's a crazy base jumper. He doesn't yeah. do the wingsuiting thing. Uh, he doesn't proximity fly, but he jumps off like bridges and antennas That's and dope. mountains. Oh and wow! Yeah, he's and he's a, he wrestles too. Like, um, he's a crazy good wrestler too. Like wow. huge wrestler. Fuck yeah, man! We were talking so. to anybody like that. That's such a cool mindset, yeah. or like just any like that's just such a cool passion to have. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a trippy thing, man. Yeah. What trips me but out, dude? Is it's like just like. Think about we live in the world where we could do this. Like, think about oh, how yeah. cool it is that we have all these things that we could do. You There's know? Yeah. endless possibilities. Endless. It just sucks that you only get 24 hours in a fucking day. Yeah, and you only get so many days, and you only yeah. get so many years. Yeah. yeah. Keep going by. Yes, sir. It's, it's trippy to me that you have to pack your own parachute. Like, you have to, like, do that right. And if you don't do it right, yeah, that could be really it. could fuck it up. Yeah, that's crazy. I just beat my record for the fastest. I've, uh, I could pack a parachute in six minutes. 
I wouldn't want to pack it fast. I don't think. Yeah. Like, I would just be in that <laughs> bitch like, <laughs> like with a ruler and shit, yeah. like a making sure. magnifying glass yeah. and shit. Like so there's these things called hop and pops. It's where you get to a certain altitude and you de- exit the aircraft and immediately deploy your canopy. Mm. So with those, um, you don't allow yourself to hit terminal velocity yet. So the openings are a lot smoother and um, you know they're just kind of like a little more low key. So that if I know I'm gonna do a hop and pop, I'll just pack it. Like shit, quick because I know it's gonna open, and I don't know. I guess I shouldn't do that, but that six minutes is the fastest up, I've ever. That community packed. comes up with the fucking greatest nicknames for shit. Hop and pop, hop and pop, and boogies and shit. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll say one of my favorite ones is called the meat missile. Oh like, Jesus! It's when a human is just like falling. Yeah. Like oh, their meat. That's a yeah. meat missile because, yeah. bro, think about being under an open canopy and somebody just. That's probably like to die. That's dangerous, 100. bro. Imagine if you somebody shot a human at you from thirteen thousand so feet. You'd probably do some damage with a human. Yeah, you'd explode. People would just start exploding. Yeah, brother. Yeah. It's I mean, fucked. You can't catch somebody jumping off of like say like a ten foot surface. They jumped. You try to catch them. That'd be very hard. Oh boy. Think of somebody throwing a fucking hundred pound dumbbell at you. Like, are you gonna uh, catch you're it? You're gonna demolish it. It's gonna yeah. explode into like. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's That's really fucked. That's a hundred pounds. Like, fuck, man. That's another thing, dude. It's like I could technically like with with I'm at with skydiving. I could skydive on the weekends. For extra money, you know, for that, I could start yeah. skydiving. If I, I could take, if I really wanted to go on my skydiving path, like mm-hmm. I could, you know, if I said, fuck flying, fuck save the wave, fuck everything else, and I focused on skydiving, like I'm at the point now where I could do that, but it's just, and that's kind of trippy too because. I don't know. I, I love skydiving. Yeah. I just I don't really want to make like one of my favorite hobbies and one of my favorite passions a job. Yes, yeah. I understand that. I mean, getting a sponsor and going to the Maldives for yeah. partying and just getting content, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. That's like you're on your own. But being a guy that like takes tandems all the time, I just don't think that's for me. Have you ever so. considered making like multiple uh, like pages, like content pages where you do specifically save the wave, specifically skydiving, specifically flying and all that other shit? Or are you just under one umbrella of Josh Snell. Yeah, right now I'm 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 just under one umbrella, but I've thought about it. Word. I have some like I think that would me- work I have well, some bro. like small like meme pages that I like just kind of fuck around on like yeah. but I think so too, man. I'm thinking about that. That might work well yeah. because then you can have multiple ultimately multiple yeah. sources of well, that's it, what kind of like influence. Yeah. What were you going to say? It also takes that pressure away from you kind of like you were saying before of like not knowing whether or not your fans and shit would want to see something in particular. Like if you put up your skydiving videos on your main page that's, like, strictly about Save the Wave and shit, how you were saying before that your fans might not like that right. as much. That's why I struggle help with. you in that regard, oh, too. Dude, I got to bring this up, too. We got to talk about this, but similar to how Mr. Beast, yeah. like, he'll have Beast Philanthropy, Beast Gaming, right. specifically Mr. Beast, where he does his wild videos, and he has, like, all of the different um, languages like that he does. subgroups of what Yeah, he that's does. what I'm saying. And you're Josh Snell, so right. you have the subgroups of your categories and so on but yeah. dude didn't you say you worked or you were going to work with mr beast with yeah uh, save the wave and stuff like that so talk yeah, about that, that was please. trippy man so actually if you watch some of the mr beast videos um you'll see my shirts in there all the time like wow. especially the gaming ones because wow. um yeah i'm actually super tight with um my friend bailey shout out bailey um he's a super dope kid and um when i I blew up on TikTok pretty heavy when I was doing Save the Wave. Like, I was, like, doing some numbers on TikTok, and mm. I was busting out some, like, millions of views. Like, I was getting crazy views, and I was Crushing. really, like, pushing it hard on TikTok. And then this kid reached out to me. He's like, yo, like, I'm a producer for Mr. Beast. I saw what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I'd love to have you on a podcast. And so we actually did a podcast in his Prius. He had, like, a whole studio set up like this, like, in his Prius. Wow. And me and my boy Alex, who was doing Save the Wave with me, living in my bus at the time, uh, did this podcast. And we formed a relationship. And, um, yeah, he's a great kid. And I'm just kind of, like, super tight with him. And I give him a bunch of clothes. And he gives them to all the Mr. Beast people. Damn. And it sucks, though, because Mr. Beast did the ocean. You know how Mr. Yeah. Beast did the ocean yeah, saving yeah. thing? So when he did that, at that point, I was super, like, off with save the wave like i wasn't posting i was like focusing oh, okay. on skydiving and flying like i was super off of the project and it just sucks because i think that if i was going as hard as i was when i met him uh, like the whole mr b's crew that we could have merged together and he could have really helped i don't know it's always a who what knows if, you know yeah who knows but bro. uh but bailey's a good kid the whole team is super dope and uh yeah, you could definitely find my my shirts in a lot of their yeah. videos, which is super cool. Yeah, that is sick, man. Because he's the biggest YouTuber in the world. Fuck yeah, yeah. he's the big, he's who's bigger by Nobody. a landslide, bro. Yeah, he's he's, he's a goat, man. And that's the number one platform for competitive like 
fucking entertainment. Like, if you're going to go anywhere, in today's day and age, it's fucking YouTube. Or yeah. if you want to go shorter than that, TikTok. But yeah. YouTube is really the main one. It is. That's like How the cool mother shit, man. That's He's so crazy. King. He's the king of that. He's the shit. king. And he, it's crazy some of the shit he pulls off, too. I really can't wrap my head around it. Oh, yeah, no, like it's, it's chocolate factories. And giving people everything. Houses, yeah. gro- yeah. like grocery stores. Lamborghinis. You can't even fathom. Everything. That's crazy. Everything. everything. Now, you ever heard of... brilliant. Have you and I ever talked about uh, that sociology idea, that theory of, like, the degrees, like, there's six degrees to anybody, where, like, there's six connections between you and anybody in the world. Ooh. You know what I mean? I believe that. It's like a sociological theory. Mm -hmm. And with the advancement of social media, they're saying that the degrees are even shorter, like three degrees. But I think this idea originated with... Uh, within the uh, the movie industry with Kevin Bacon, there was Ooh. a joke going around like, you know, you're six degrees from Kevin Bacon because everybody did a movie with Kevin Bacon. And in some way, you've done a movie with somebody who was connected or did a somebody, movie with Kevin yeah. Bacon. So this kind of came into sociology where you're actually six theorized. You're actually six degrees away from anybody oh, in the yeah. world. Like, like you could. No matter what, you have a connection yeah. with some so six like, connections. With so them. like, say. You know, I know Josh Snell. Josh Snell knows Bailey. Bailey knows this guy, and this guy knows Mr. Yeah. Beast. Like that's like four. I've seen people on TikTok do that shit too. Away from connecting with Mr. Beast, yeah. Yeah, biggest YouTuber so cool. in the whole entire world. Like yeah. that is a yeah, really you cool are. idea. Yeah, yeah, you are. It's crazy. It's that's really like trippy. what networking is all about too, because you meet dope people who then yeah. will in turn put you on to dope people. Those dope people put mm-hmm. you on to more dope people. Like I said before, it's man, the there's only part. so many people out there. Yeah, yeah. seriously, yeah. there is only infinite. so many people, and it's a small world. And if you you know have a message and a voice and you put it out there, then. You're going to, you know, it's everybody's just people, too. Yeah. I don't care how famous somebody is. I don't care how much who they are. They're just a human being. Oh, yeah, yeah. bro. You know, you know, they're not going to, they can't, they're not like superheroes. They're not going to be more powerful than the next guy. Like, oh. they're all, everyone's going to die. In 100 years, we're all going to be dead. Like, it's just like. They had a dream just like you. Yeah, exactly. And on a deeper note with, like, connections and say the sixth degree thing, I think we're all connected. On oh a, yeah, on a on a spectrum oh, yeah. that's uncomprehendable. I think we're all like a one unit that mm. just you know we're the universe experiencing itself. Yeah, in, bro. In just all these different ways. That's why I have this inclination to want to travel to Asia because the Dude, eastern Asian's sick. Bro. Eastern. I, I might go with you. Let's plan some yeah, shit out. Let's do it. I want to go live in a monastery, bro. Bro, I, bro I've my mom. So she's a mindfulness meditation teacher. Like, nah, I have so many, for real, she does mind. She does retreats where she'll go do silent retreats. And she won't speak for a week, and she'll meditate Whoa. for a week, and she won't speak. And really? she'll be in a, a mountain in a Spain where That's she just cool. doesn't speak, and yeah. she's getting taught. And they're literally just like, oh, um, yeah, for like man. hours. The holy oh, man. I love that stuff. Isn't that like, trippy? Dope. I yeah. love that stuff. I got into mindful meditation uh, in 2019. I started with Headspace, and then I'd just been doing my own forms of meditation since then. And, and, and the way that it changed my life is actually ridiculous, but... Um, and I like to Asia's read a lot. Asia's crazy. I'm sorry I got lost in Asia for a second. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. I like to read a lot. And lately I've been trying to focus my readings on uh, like Eastern philosophy and Eastern thought and the way that they conduct themselves and how they think wow. and stuff like that. And uh, it's a common um, way of the East to believe that you're connected to everybody and you're connected to this world. And we're not truly individuals. Like there is no self. No. You know what I mean? And uh, that that theory and philosophy really intrigues me and like the yeah. way that they live and it's real. how they conduct themselves to live a blissful life and right. stories of the Buddha achieving enlightenment next enlightenment, to the Bodhi yeah. tree and he just yeah. let go of himself. Wow. Let go. I think that's the that's coolest the trick, thing, man. I get, I get chills. I got to talk to your mom yeah. though, bro. That sounds She's like goading, really cool man. stuff. Seriously. And that's the way, I, that's honestly the reason I am who I am yeah. is my mom. She's my rock. She's my everything. She's taught me so much, you know, just, and having those, um, you know, that spiritual, like, mindfulness yeah, influence yeah. on me at a young age. Like, it just, it, it, you know, it set me apart from a lot of different people for, like, you know, because I have, I, you know, I think about stuff, you know, mm. think, be in the moment, you know, stay present. Like, yes. you know, just all these different lessons that That's the Buddha's taught her. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, she's a crazy, she's dope, man. She does sound dope as fuck. She actually uh, started, uh, you said Headspace? She yeah. started, like, a thing kind of like that called Studio B. And uh, Studio B is, like, her startup that she started, and it's doing really good. Like, they have, like, fundraising. Like, they have a team of, like, 20 people now. Wow. Um, it's a virtual uh, mindfulness and meditation program, mm. basically. Wow. So it's, like, you could pay. So there's a few different sides to it, but you could pay 20 bucks and get access to all these different, like, yogas, meditations, mindfulness sessions from all these different p- teachers from across the world. And uh, they also help, like, businesses. Like, let's say... Uh, uh, Netflix. If she got Netflix as a client, she could like 
get access all of the Netflix's employees could have access to all of Studio B's like yeah, teachers. Oh wow. So that they can be more productive yeah. in, in their respective fields. So I'm proud of her for that. Wow, She's man, killing that's it. beautiful. Oh, that's yeah. really that awesome. Sound that's kind of sounds like you. Like you felt this you felt responsible for cleaning oceans. Uh-huh. It's like almost like your mom had this this uh this Dharma where she had to mm-hmm. share her, her mindfulness and her yeah. meditation with people. So that's dude, that's so cool, man. Yeah, it's cool. Huh? She's that's a, really she's cool. A very interesting person. That's yeah. cool. And she contributed to who you are now and in, mm-hmm. in, in your creative way. Yeah. So for damn. sure. Yeah. Shout out Mama Snow. Yeah. Two Thanks. two times. Maybe you have her on the podcast one day. Yeah, how about <laughs> it? That'd be yeah. cool, man, for sure. Yeah. I would love to hear about that fucking that week retreat thing that you're talking about. Like it's trippy, dude. That sounds like it Because dude, think it. about like if you meditate so much to the point where you start getting tri- like trippy. Yeah, like, you can yeah, hallucinate yeah. during you meditation. Tap into you get some hallucinated. Shit. Yeah. You could find some it gets interesting if you really just start mm-hmm. getting into yourself and mm-hmm. you start like letting go of the layers of yourself and you stop thinking yeah. and you just start being like a human and you just start sitting like it's and dude she brings the around around the coolest person like people um dude there's this guy govinda um it's this little japanese guy that practices a strong yoga and he does practice practices mindfulness and meditation i will get he you guys need to have my yes podcast. please bro okay. like everybody else is like yeah have, do you need to have this guy govinda on your podcast like mm. bro like this guy has done he has just the craziest stories and he's yeah. living in a box truck out in uh california in um like one of the weed meccas of California. Like, wow. yeah, he's a tr- he's a cool. Dude. That's a cool name. When yeah. you said that, that uh, Govinda. There, there's a book named Siddhartha, which is about a uh, story of a man who becomes enlightened. And wow. The name of You're the Buddha. Into that shit. Oh yeah, I love it. And uh, the name of the Buddha that people follow today, his name is Siddhartha Gautama, and his best friend's name was Govinda. And they might were, be him. They were seeking. How like, is this? How old is this? This book. Yeah. It was written in like the 60s by a guy dude, named Herman Hess. It's probably Govinda. <laughs> uh, no, it was written in the 60s. Who knows? And it was written in oh, Germany. It was written dude, in Germany. Govinda's so. like 70. But the, um, the story of the Buddha is, is far back. Oh, like yeah, This yeah, isn't yeah. during the 1900s right. or anything like that. So, Dude, but it's Govinda's cool. in there with the spiritual people and like yeah. in that whole upbringing. Like, dude, he's done yoga with superstars. I forget who, like, like oh, um, starts with an S, uh, rock star. Uh, sling, uh, s- Slipknot just doing medic- sting. meditation <laughs> with Sting. <laughs> sting. Sting's yeah, I know Sting. sting. Yeah. Bro, no, but like seriously, like like people, like he's gone and done like private sessions with people. Wow. And he, he, yeah, we got to get connected. Like, you know, that guy seems sick. Dude, a crazy thing he did, he was a, at one point he was a monofruitarian, which means he had a diet where he only ate one fruit for three months. Whoa. Oh, wow. Monofruitarian. Wow. I never heard of such a thing. So for three like, months at a time, let's just say um, mangoes. He was telling me like, so he would his diet was mangoes and water for three months. Can you imagine that? Only yeah, eating it's weird. mangoes. It's weird. He said the taste of a mango after like a month would be like overpowering to the point because your senses are like you know so depleted from anything else yeah. that like this mango would be so sweet like candy and like mm-hmm. it, oh yeah it's yeah it's interesting. You gotta, you gotta talk to that guy. He's crazy. Yeah yeah bro okay. got to got to. Love to that'd be dope. He could talk about the. Tr- the most spiritual, trippy stuff, and like that'd be dope. That's him. Like this motherfucker can go out that shit for hours, though. I love yeah. talking about. Sometimes shit like talking that. about it can be a disservice, though. Yeah, oh, sometimes yeah. that these concepts aren't like able to be put into words. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So I agree. That'd be cool to yeah, talk to. One time, to a guy me and like him, that. me and him were chilling in the bus, you know, just vibing out, and you know, just like smoking, chilling. Yeah. And we were just vibing. And my this guy's like seventy, and he's <laughs> just like the best person in the world. And we're literally in the bus, and like. You know, I'm just sitting there, and he's, like, saying all these like, things. I'm like, yo, this is, like, so intense right now. Yeah. Like, this is so, like, you could feel the energy going between us, like, wow. back and forth. Like, you're like, yo, this is, like, you can feel it. Yeah. Every, up and down your body, like, chills and, like. There's something to this life. Oh, oh man. Yeah. It's special. Right? It's a very special thing. Something to it. It's a very special thing. I don't know if we'll ever tap into truly what that is, though. But we all. Get I don't think we're supposed to. Feelings. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of agree. I, I don't think we are either. I don't think anybody really is supposed to. I think yeah. you're just kind of supposed to take it with a grain of salt and then experience mm-hmm. your experiences. That's all we're here to do is yeah. experience. And everybody, like, yeah. I genuinely have been thinking a lot about this recently, too. I think everybody is kind of the same person, just leading different experiences. And that's, like, what shapes people to become who they are. It shapes people to become, say, like, the forest end of the spectrum being completely miserable or on the other forest end of the spectrum being as happy as you could possibly be. I think that all comes from the same thing. You're just throwing different cards and different life experiences. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah wow. Go Getters podcast, man. This is this is awesome. Yo, Josh Chanel, bro. I really appreciate what you're doing in this world, bro. Well, I'm thankful that I'm you. here with some like with a soul like you. I'm so, so you guys have something real special here. Your uh, your message is truly beautiful. Thank you, man. You know you have a lot of unique qualities to you, and I'm very very grateful that you sat down with us. Yeah, today. bro. Really no, you guys it. have something real special. I'm so excited. You guys are just starting. Like you guys are Love. in the beginning of this, man. Yeah. And I'm gonna like I'll blast you guys all over the place. Like yeah, man. That's we just had the like, best conversation. Was it an hour might and a half? One of the best podcasts I've yeah. ever. Oh yeah, yeah, bro! It I'm felt very like it was. It was great. Intimate. Yeah, it was yeah. a great flow and experience. Flow, man. Yeah. Great conversations. Fucking, we definitely got to wow. tap in and do something more in the future. Yes, like, we would love to help you. Maybe, definitely, when money starts flowing more, invest in somehow and towards mm. like the ocean and like what you do, or even like something as simple as joining you for like maybe something like a cleanup or something you have. Or a in. skydiving trip. <laughs> yes, bro. <laughs> honestly, honestly. come on, let's do come it. On. Yeah, out. Fuck yeah. Or anything in the van too, man. If you fucking start traveling again, yeah, like man. get in that van, we could do anything. Like no, this is the, this is the beginning of a, of, a, of a good relationship. Yes, yes sir, bro. I'm excited that we started this. Wow. And yo, there's no rules in saying that we only have to do one podcast. Oh, no, fuck. no, we could do a million <laughs> of these, John's for sure. So it's endless conver- like great conversations could be had any day of the fucking week. You don't yeah. gotta schedule a great conversation. It's no. supposed to just be natural, man. We could do yeah. this shit whenever. But tell That's the fucking awesome. people where they can find you, because you're gonna Yo, want to check this guy out, man. Wavy <laughs> Snell, there. Wavy Snell on everything. On I have wavysnell.com, Wavy Snell on Instagram, Wavy Joshua on TikTok, mm-hmm. the Wave Saver. It's all waves. Just follow the wave. Follow That's, the you wave. You can find it. Wavy Snell, Josh Snell, just, you can find it. You'll find me. We're saving waves out here, man. Save the wave. Get with baby. it. Get right or get left. Save the wave.com. Come Actually, on. you know, it's wavysnell.com. But yeah, man, get yourself a t shirt. Help save the oceans. Yes. Go jump out of a plane. Just find yourself, man, and keep enjoying your life and keep pushing your limits. Follow those dreams, man. Follow that intuition, you know, the yes. passion, the burning yes. passion deep down. That's the main uh, message here, man. You heard it. Yes, sir. Go get it. Go get it. Ocean man. Mm-hmm. <laughs>